Precise, He's fast. Like devil. He's fast. <laughs> Carrying a lot of speed. Just a couple of turns to go. Jordan Williams, 18 years old. Oh, he's looking. Oh, oh. that was fast. Here we go, Rachel Afferton. It's Super Bruni. What is the second split going to say? Now she's going to have to hit the gas. The fastest bump in the world on track. Wow! And she's wobbling. Jordan Williams crosses the line. Whoa. Jordan Williams goes into the hot seat. Troy Brosnan claps. Dakota Norton cannot believe it. Yes, it is time to go racing once more at the UCI Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup. We're in the Leah Gang Salzburger land for one of the absolute classics of the calendar. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth today is the man, the myth, the legend, Cedric Gracia. Cedric, semi-finals first. Should be exciting. <laughs> Should be exciting what we saw last week. Hello, everyone. So happy and it's dry. It's sunny Leo Gang. Leo Gang in the sun. I should apologize for the rain yesterday. That was my fault for telling everybody about how dry it had been all week. Sure enough then, it turned into, uh, basically, if Kevin Costner had gone past on a catamaran, it couldn't have been any wetter, so. Semi-final start list is all over the shop. We've got some of the big names mixing it in there with some riders that we wouldn't have expected to see in there heading your way. Here is the running order for this afternoon. The semi-final for the elite women, then the semi-final for the elite men. Final for the elite women and then the final for the elite men at two o'clock. Tomorrow, all about cross country Olympic, but look, we'll get to that when we get to that. Today is all about downhill. A very mixed bag of results, as I say, from yesterday. Sunny out there today, 16 degrees, humidity 57%. So it can and often does do anything in the mountains, Cedric, but a fascinating race here for us today, given that, I mean, it's starting from scratch, isn't it? Exactly. It's just a new start today. I mean, it's a mountain sport. You know, <laughs> this could happen. It happened yesterday. But big game. Yeah, and we will not be seeing this man. We may well be able to hear from him later on. Though Amari Pierron sidelined with that back injury. I heard he's in town though. Right last night. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't miss much. <laughs> Aaron Gwynn as well. Unfortunately, the winner not here this weekend. The man who won here without a chain in 2015. We all remember that, eh? Yeah, we're wishing him all the best in the recuperation process. Some arm and shoulder injuries suffered at round one. But the crowds are filling in here for a place that always provides great racing. Always, and um, it's going to be difficult today as well after practice on such a diff you know, different feel, different setup on the bike. It's going to be tough to have the right setup. Yeah, I was down in the pits earlier on today and it, it felt almost like the first day of practice because the, the setups, honestly, before that rain yesterday, we were talking about this being possibly the fastest ever downhill World Cup track speeds. Up near 80 kilometers an hour up there and then the heavens opened not once but twice. Kind of flooded everyone out. So now the track, it's actually, it's actually whisper at Cedric. I don't want to curse it again. It's looking better. Yeah, better Rachel than Rachel Afferton, the fastest mum in the world on track. 39 UCI World Cup wins to her name and she dearly loved to make it a nice round 40. Afferton crosses the line. I felt like I slotted straight back into it, you know. I love racing and I, I take it so seriously and that's, that seems to be just naturally what I can do, you know. I, I guess I've done it for so many years, it, it literally felt like I'd never been away. It was mad. The family right there! There's the Ollie and her daughter. I love having a kid and having a baby and it's awesome, but it's really hard just suddenly stepping away from that focus and that dedication to, to being a racer and to pushing yourself and getting the best out of yourself. And I found it really hard to not have a goal, you know, and a focus. So I knew I wanted to do some races this year for sure. And I couldn't commit myself to training properly until 
I was getting more sleep and really she's been sleeping better for a few months and I started training. It's so hard to get fit. I want to be strong. I'm fed up of having a bad back, you know, I'm fed up of feeling rubbish. I've ridden like once down a bike since before Christmas. It's so fun. I literally can't believe how fun it is. <laughs> I've been training for about two months. I live at W Bike Park and I ride there every single weekend, two, three days a week. And that is that has got to be, you know, good for you. Lapping the bike park all day. She can't beat Rachel Afferden, half a second oh. back. Afferden can't believe it, there's win number 40. Oh. I just can't believe it, it's mental. Oh my gosh. Leah Gang's next week and I just, I'm so exhausted. If I have a trio of wins, I also have about five injuries here. I like it here, but it never, I feel like it never really goes my way. It's a weird track because it's a lot of fast bike park stuff and then some gnarly technical. I've never ridden these new bottom woods, so I was really stoked to see that in real life. This track is one minute longer than last weekend. So for me, it's not ideal. <laughs> Just gets slower and slower as the track gets longer and longer. So I'm not sure what the tactic is this weekend, but I, I just know that uh, I just want to have a solid run and not get hurt. That's the main thing. For me this year, the, the goal is not to win World Champs, but that's the goal. I know I've got a solid few months of training before that, so I can be a lot stronger and fitter. And now I've won last weekend. I don't really know. I guess I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just here to, to have fun still. Like, I really missed it, been at home and been a new mum. It's, it's so different, you know, it could not be more different to this adrenaline fueled kind of extreme testosterone driven lifestyle and it's basically like an awesome holiday with a bit of hard work in between. Well one of the very very best to ever do it. Rachel Afferton 35 years young for Continental Afferton 40 UCI World Cup wins 67 podiums which is almost more impressive. Yes. World Championship titles five Leo Gang downhill wins, a trio of wins here in Austria for her. Cedric, they don't get much better than Rachel, do they? Yes, and uh, the way she just come back and did it, that it's just so special and uh, it was emotional for everyone and I think everyone loved Rachel and being a mom and be able to perform at this level, that uh, without, I mean, training of course, but no at 100%, then can she do it again? A very, on the bike, a very familiar Rachel Afferton off the bike a very very different character she seems like she's just really enjoying it and she's she's comfortable and she's she's with her family and she's racing i think she told us in that interview as well that maybe she had thought that those two worlds would be mutually exclusive but not at all she's enjoying being here let's have a look at the track here in lea gang the whoop 4.0 section this top section critical all off camber then into the famous stump section where reese wilson did the business in worlds Big motorway. Big motorway, just about as fast as downhill tracks. Get them back into these lower technical woods that we just heard Rachel Afferton say. Pivotal. And then into the famous Finnish Bowl Arena where we have seen some of the biggest moments in downhill history take place. Okay, guys, Liu Gang 2023, let's go. Dropping off the gate here, we got a hip into a corner, same as last year. And this off camera is super blown out already. Um, Gap over the road. Everything's the same so far to last year, except for this. We go straight, and we got some grass off camera now. That's uh, pretty loose, but now we're back onto the old track. A few little doubles. It's quite windy up here, so you gotta watch out for that. And this stuff's dusty, but pretty much the same as last year. A little bit of a different tape job here. They took out the rollers that Lori looped out on last year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we go low, do a little gap. Yo, know, slightly different tape job, but still pretty much the same route through the tunnel. Over here, this is another big change. You do it like this little checkup. And then you go off down here into this stump section. A lot of people are looking at this, checking out lines and stuff. Got through that pretty good, actually. Woo. Oh, don't miss the island. And we're onto the motorway. Woo! 
love these jumps. Oh, got a full speed tuck for this next bit. A lot of time can be made or lost here over these jumps. But it's running fast this year, we're flying. Oh, oh I love this bit, it's so fun. Feels like on a roller coaster. Wah. Triple. Wah. See if I can do the gap or the wall ride. Wah. That was sketchy. Okay, we're back into the trees now, but it is running so fast compared to last year. Not even comparable. Another little new section here. Just kind of straightened it up a bit compared to last year. Help carry speed here as well. Straighten it up over the gap. Nice little scrub roller here. And we're close. Not there yet though. Got to make it through this last section first. That rut's hard, but I got it good. And we sprint and tuck to the finish. Phew. There it is. Just as simple as that then. Jackson Goldstone on the GoPro course preview for us. How can he talk like that and ride <laughs> exactly, that Exactly, that's what I was saying. How, how fast he was going, he was talking like he was basically in his living room. Unreal, here we go then. Camille Balanche leads the way. Rachel Afferton, 14 points back. Nina Hoffman, the Hoffman third. 120 points back though. Big gap already, huh? And here are the contenders we are going to be talking about today. Camille Balanche, the reigning overall title holder from last time out. Denied victory at home in Switzerland last time out. She'll be hungry for redemption here in Austria. Valentina Hall knows all the lefties by their first name. She grew up in this bike park and she was the fastest qualifier yesterday. She'll be hard to beat here. Rachel Afferton, the fastest mum in the world, going for 41 wins today. Just an unreal competitor. Unreal. Nina Hoffman, all about the race run pace. Whenever she's on one, it's hard to hassle the Hoff. Big competition on those ladies today. You know? Big, big, big competition. So, semi finals on their way. Here is how they will start. Louise Anna Ferguson from Continental Nuke Proof will get us underway presently with Frida Helena Ronning. After her, the Norwegian and Anna Newkirk. Top 10 last time out for Newkirk. And then Tani Seagrave back in business for Canyon Collective FMD. Leads the way into the top five. So good to see her back, you know. So good to see Tani back in business. And let's head to the top now. So it's 10 elite women plus any protected riders outside of that will go through to the finals. Definitely see how the, the wood section, you know, been drying out. I saw the ride this morning and look already really dry. Cedric, I have to, I was scanning my memory banks last night, trying to remember a World Cup race where we saw such polar different sets of weather conditions. It was absolutely monsoon rain. You and I courageously hid in Bart Brenchin's pit and drank coffee whilst it rained. But the rain, as they would say back home, was bouncing, bouncing off the ground back up again. And then all of a sudden it stopped and it's roasting hot again. So 
What does that do for you as a racer? I mean, are you starting on a blank canvas today? Well, that, you know, like it, it, it gets in your head, you know, when you use your mechanic, you know, it starts raining like this, you know, it's going to be a difficult course. You know, it's going to be the same for everyone who is left at the start. Then it's all about, uh, you know, you have to start again. You put your extra visor there just to make sure the water is on the extra, you know, we usually, uh, uh, usually uh, use a lens. Just the water, don't go in your goggles. Yep. Um, set up different for the tires, but you don't know if it's worth it or not yet. It's just like how do you need to have people on the terrain, you know, you just send someone and say, ah, oh, wet is the woods, you know? Is it made more difficult by the fact that you've got that motorway section here? Because you can go to a more aggressive tire and downhill racing, you know, with taller knobs on the rubber to, to really dig into stuff, but you're going to sacrifice rolling speed on one of the very fastest sections, of course, anywhere in the world, as Louisiana Ferguson leaves the start hub for Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing. Let's see, there is the top section. We're seeing it for the first time, then down in through this route section that leads into the second route section. That first one, pretty straightforward compared to the second one. This one's savage. Exactly, and that's where a lot of people had problems yesterday because a lot of roots and stuff, and uh, they're exposed. They was full on in the rain yesterday. Like in the last wood section, at least it is alpine tree, then it's like making a little umbrella and it's harder to have the water <laughs> the water getting in. But that's, that's what it was. It worked like this. They're thick trees, like really thick trees. Yeah. And this is a motorway here, like you need to save so much energy, but don't lose time too. We, we're heading out now onto the motorway section. So this is where speed, it's a temple of speed really in terms of downhill mountain bike racing. Now, that doesn't just mean that you can relax and get off the brakes though. You've got to nail all the backsides of these jumps individually to give yourself every kilometer an hour into this last wood section. And less hair time as possible, saving energy, position, like speed tucking and try to avoid so those extra things uh, to just don't lose energy and time. Yeah, Ferguson around that wall ride spends a lot of her time living and riding in New Zealand. So no stranger to going fast, plenty of good mountain biking down there. She heads in to give us our first look at this lower wood section for the first time, Cedric. Tell us what this one's like. The light looks tricky in there, actually. Well, it's really tricky. The light is really bright before you enter that wood section and you definitely jump into basically a fill of roots. Then you have to know where you're landing. Because I saw Greggy yesterday, some of his footage, he went straight into a tree. Then when it happened this to Greg now, you know, and that's the, one the, of the best, ever, yeah, the it, best yeah. ever. Then um, I saw a lot of people, you know, uh, try to get confident in that interest because it's going to basically giving you a good feel or not about that last wood section. If you enter right, really good speed, you're like, you're so confident. If you start to case something and go straight to the first uh, tree, it's going to be difficult. It doesn't take long for that confidence to evaporate. So. Yes. Over the big gap jump then for Ferguson. Oh. It is one of the most difficult things about downhill racing is that variable speed element where you come off that motorway where, as I say, speed's right up along the fastest we've ever seen earlier this weekend. And then all of a sudden the track gets steeper and you need to anchor up, yes. recalibrate. Yeah, recalibrate and you have to be able to attack every section, like there flat or... Down over the finish line, Louisiana Ferguson sets our benchmark time with a 3 minute 48.9. But look at the look at the bike, tires are clean, everything is perfect, the track is going to run faster and faster today. Frida running then for Norway, leaves the start hop for Union, forged by Steel City. So just for a bit of context then, Valley Hull's fastest time yesterday in quality was a 3.32.9, so we are expecting to see the times tumble here. Valentina Hull, though, very, very much the woman to beat Cedric. Yeah, it's good to be our and she's at home, and if, you know, if you don't get in her head and she can deal with it, she's going to be dangerous. She told us in the pre-event uh, press conference earlier in the week that she has got better at dealing with that. It's a it's a kind of a soft pressure, isn't it? Whenever you race at home and yeah. your friends and family, all your cousins come down from the hills. It's, yeah. you know, it's extra. Yeah, but sometimes the extra make you even better. Yeah. Then, uh, but you have to learn how to deal with it. I got a really good time. Running, yeah, goes yeah. into the hot seat by a tenth of a second. Yeah. So already we're seeing yeah. racing down to a tenth of a second, just yeah. looking out the commentary yeah. booth window. 
Louise Anna Ferguson not even able to get herself into the hot seat in time. Yes. Now, but extra pressure sometimes make you just better than you were thinking it would be. Then uh, I hope she can deal with it today. She showed us last week she did between semi-final and final when she crashed into that rock section. I think she, yeah, she's uh, definitely a threat today for every girl. Who Anna wins? Newkirk oh. then leaves the start hop for the USA. Interesting set of results last time out. Eighth and quality ninth in the semi-final and 10th in the finals. But look now, she's yeah. 1.8 seconds to the good. They, they did really good over that bridge. She opened that line. It was good, like, just to get a better exit speed. Yeah. Newkirk, one of the big talents emerging from the US, riding for Beyond Racing, crosses the line. 2.8 yeah. seconds, so she did lose a yeah, little time the, in there. The, yeah, at the bottom. The bottom is, like, the second fastest spot on the track after motorway then uh... Michaela Parton leaves the star hot for resolute racing disappointment at the last round for her but she will put that behind her the young, the young Scotswoman from Fort William in the Highlands but has relocated recently to Duffy Bike Park where we heard Rachel Afferton say she rides every day so Michaela Parton 1.4 back now at the 47. four split 47 kilometer Again, we saw these these low these lower two splits. Whoa, just bike moving around yes, on the brake. She was so way inside, and you see like she lost grip. Cedric, how difficult is it to manage a track like this where all of a sudden you may have a damper patch with more grip and then a dry patch with loose? Usually you find out when you're on that spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's on airing insight. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and you have to deal with it really quick. It's all about reaction time. Yeah. But yes. This will happen today, and it just happened here in that corner. Then, obviously, you know it's going to be one or two spots like this, but you ha you cannot think about those. And is that just bike time then? That's bike just timing on the bike, yeah. The rhythm of those big jumps at the top really hard to get the back side. It's uh, really big. So here we are, Veronica Widman on track now in the national champ sleeve of Italy. And she's looking good here, Cedric. Yes, she lost a little bit of time at the top, but maybe that's the way to do it today. Try to save a little bit of energy and try to build your race run. Where more you go down, more you get confident, and more you leave those brakes alone. And will you feel that as a racer? Will she feel like it's going well? Will she feel like it's going faster? When, when, you, feel, when you have that feeling, it's just amazing. You know you're on a good one. And it's like, go, go time, and you want more. More, more, more. Veronica Whitman into the hot seat then, but Gracie Hemstreet leaves the start of the first year elite. One of the young riders who really lit up the first round in Lenzerheide, Hemstreet now on course. The 18-year-old from Canada for Norco Factory Racing. What a style, and what a run on the split four. Yeah. Almost four seconds down. Almost four seconds to the good now, Hemstreet. She was oh, yes. sixth last time out. And Lenzer had a fourth in the semi final, so. Almost 49, 40, 49k an hour. Yeah, we're waiting to see our first resident of the 50 kilometer in our club. <laughs> and we're expecting to see that smashed as the day goes on, of course. Our track is going to be faster and faster. It's grippy right oh, now. Hemstreet, oh. big whip over the finish line jump. Down to the finish. A great time for her. Nearly four seconds faster. Yes. Five and a half, sorry, my mistake. Five and a half seconds for Gracie Hemstreet. So, plenty of time up there still. Just a reminder, this is the semi-final, so it will be the top 10 riders, plus any protected riders outside that head through. Jess Blewett now for New Zealand, riding for GT oh! Continental Factory Racing. Oh, sorry, she landed so far on her first jump. She barely passed the landing by a meter and a half or oh, two. Jess Blewett. Wow. Whipping through our nine lives on this motorway section, but the live drone just giving you some indication of how fast it is up there. You can see that clear line right in the middle, and you get out onto that marbly stuff either yes. side of it. Yeah, and it, it looks like it's straight, but it's not that this speed, a little corner, it's just like a big one. It's one of the interesting things Lloyd Bruni actually said to us earlier in the weekend was that he feels that this is a track with a lot of straight lines, and it's all about linking those straight lines yes. together. Yeah. Look like a video game, you know, you have to go through those levels a lot, tuck, 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 tuck. then, um, yeah, you have to link everything perfectly. But, you know, sometimes a little mistake somewhere, just if you can 
reset your button, make you a little bit even more hungry. Yeah. You, know, you just want to go for it. Then. But uh, today... Blew it, moving backwards a wee bit here. A good start, 1.4 up on Hem Street early on, but wow. moving away from her now, one and a half seconds back, it's split four. From that mistake, it's right there around speak three. That's actually, what it is. Yeah, Cedric's right. That's the perfect example of how one little mistake on that fast section can just take four or five kilometers an hour off your trajectory. And rhythm, rhythm for the full moto. Yep. Moto section is like you need a perfect rhythm and perfect speed. If you're entering that, that motorway with uh, just lower speed, you're going to case the jump, you're not going to have a great feeling, and you're going to start stinking. So Hemstreet is a non-protected rider, but she is looking like uh, she's done. She's given herself the best chance of getting through here. Jess Blewett crosses the line. Second for the moment. Yeah, looks good for Blewett too, that you'd have to say. Here is Kabiru. Kabiru. A, a rider that Cedric has spent a lot of time talking to. How do you rate her chances today, Cedric? I mean, it's hard, it's tough for her. She crashed and broke her back here. Then when you have to go through that section again, full speed, something is going to happen in your mind. And is that in the root section? Yeah, in the root section. But really impressed how those women can deal with stuff like this. Uh, uh, she's strong, she's fit, and she's hungry. Downhill mountain bike racing, a tough, tough sport, both yeah. physically and mentally, perhaps even more so mentally than physically. Two tenths back now for Kabiru. Yeah, she She'll be looking to ease herself into the finals here. No yeah. heroics, 49 kilometers an hour. She's pretty much in contact, and that's why she has to run, you know, like take the chance now. No in the semi final, of course, but on this wood section, it's a lot of time to gain or lose here. It's all about confidence, leaving the bright side at the right moment to make sure you don't go through your travel and just like battle mark your fork. It's all about momentum, keeping the rhythm, heads up, and try to let the bike play, you know, just. Follow the bike. Well, she's found. She's found some time in the yes. woods here. A split four. She's six tenths up. Kabaru looking good. Definitely, she's been working on those braking area section. That try to don't brake too hard to stop the bike. She tried to keep the flow a little bit more and look like it's working so far in split four. The overall title winner from that COVID-affected 2020 season. Five World Cup wins to her name. Fifth last time out, Kabaru comes down to the line. Oh, what a Whoa. style! That is how you set a downhill bike down over the line. Now, Kabaru goes fastest. 1.2 seconds. Big ahead time of at the Street. bottom. Big yeah, time at the bottom. Big Tell time you. at the bottom. That tree, that, that last wood section is a lot of time. Phoebe Keel in first year elite as well as Hem Street leaves the start hut hoping to get into the finals today. She was like, uh, she's battling with the, basically the gearing. She's on the way too easy. You want to have kind of perfect gear and like a harder gear here. It's one of the things that uh, we strangely, as a sport, never really gets talked about. The dark art of being in the right gear at all times in downhill. But you just saw, for example, there, just a couple of more gears up and yeah. those cranks would have counted for a lot more. Because before that section, oh, she's if I 1.7 on split three. Well, shows that we know she's 1.7 up. She's obviously in the right gear all yes. right here, Phoebe Gill. And it's hard. You have to think about the corner before, you know, sometimes just to put the right gear for an exit corner and one or two crank was going to make the difference. Phoebe Gale from Scotland spends a lot of time obviously riding with Tani Seagrave. Tani and her really like two sisters in the pits. They're having a lot of fun riding together and it's a role I think Tani's really grown into and really enjoys working with Phoebe and we're starting to see the, the results of it here. Yeah, big outside line to carry the speed. It's a lot of lines there, like three choice. We will be losing five riders from this session plus as I say, it is the top 10 plus any protected rider outside of that, so we have to see how the numbers stack up. Pretty surprised that, you know, the, the light is good in that wood section, except here, like couple corner when it's this really... This little turn here yeah. we saw yesterday. Oh, yesterday. But I think today it's better, more grip because it rained. Yesterday yeah. it was really loose, it was really dusty loose. before that big shower came. Phoebe Gale comes down the line then, judges it absolutely perfectly as she has the whole run, just two tenths behind Kabiru. In the second place, celebrates. Happy with that one, Gail. Yes, it's a, it's a good run. A big, big talent. But speaking of big talents, they don't come any bigger than the woman. Exactly. 
in the overall leader's jersey, Rachel Afferton leaves the start hub. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Afferton. Uh, looking for, you know, clips, you could see in that corner, but she want to go, and when she said, when she put the helmet on and those goggles, it's go-go time. Yeah, Rachel Afferton protected for this run, so not a complete disaster for her. We saw last time out Greg Menard with a puncture in the semis, but still starting in the finals. You see, that camera is so good. We see them in the entrance, like, you know, the bike is working really well, working really under her legs, like doing all the work. No turbulence at the top. And look at the time, 2.6 on split three. 2.6, going well, Afferton, making it happen. Making wow. it happen, she was, she was cautious about her chances here this weekend, but Afferton, oh, I going think, well. Like she say, having the family with her, just make her that confident that she feel like home, basically, everywhere in the world with the family. Sixth fastest in quality yesterday, oh. Afferton. Three, three just on that wood section. She's making a big difference already, and it's a lot more to come. One of the big, big, parts of Afferton's life has always been the amount of time she spends on a downhill bike. There's none of this, uh, there's no pump, well, so there is obviously pump track sessions, but there's none of this sort of messing around. It is downhill bike or nothing for Rachel Afferton. And when it comes to runs like this, you can start to see why. 3.1 seconds, 49 kilometers an hour. Afferton making good, a good fist of this semi-finals run. Takes flight, heads down the line. Rachel Afferton speed tucking her way into the hot seat. 2.4 right, seconds right. faster. Catch me if you can. Rachel Afferton, fastest in the semi final. And that is a marker, Cedric. Yes, but I think she lost some time a little bit at the last wood section. She was a little bit, not short, but on that drop. She can make better. She can make this better. Tani Seagrave, what can she do now on the comeback trail for Canyon Collective FMD? A really, really tough experience in 2022. Coming back from that concussion injury, but Seagrave, she's back. Oh, she went, she went off or down. Yeah. Into those, you know, that, that section is probably the hardest because you need to connect everything perfectly and in the wet, it was really slippery. But so I'm just good wondering to see. if something's happened. Yeah, I, saw her I think she went the off there. there. She had normal speed, something happened. But definitely, oh yeah, she went down, look on the right. She's all dirty, knees dirty. Nine seconds back now, Seagrave, not protected either. Yeah, she crashed. Yeah, not, nine seconds. Not protected after missing so much of 2022, so. Yeah, she washed out on that corner, I guess, where all those roots are. Maybe missed up a line or something. So impressed about Tani, the way she come back. Oh, oh. she's losing the front here. Yeah, Woo. so there is some moisture up there yes. by the look of it. I think just a little bit under speed to take that line, you know, it's really off camber, roots everywhere. The crowd filling up here at the bottom of the Lea Gang finish ball. And it's just the beginning. It's going to be crowded as this afternoon. Yeah, this place always produces fantastic, fantastic racing as we head back to the start hop. Monica Rasnik for Slovenia leaves the start hop, the European continental champ. Always a pressure to have that jersey on the shoulders. That's why probably Tani had the problem. Hit right around here. Right around here, somewhere yes. towards that root section. Rasnik, 2.4 back on Afferton, so. Avoiding the big jump here. Oh! Ah. Get the front end down, Monica. Exactly. Looking fast with the motorway yeah, section of Rasnik. Yeah. Great and style on the bike. Exactly, in that corner, you don't want, you know, that's. Basically, that corner before this big motorway, you want to go death grip. That's what we talked last week, to have those fingers around the grip. No fingers on the lever on the brake. You can see Seagrave has just crossed the line 10 seconds back. Now she's moving that right shoulder very gingerly. Yeah. Not protected, as I say, so that may be the last we see of Seagrave today. We'll have to see how this thing shakes out. As we rejoin Harasnik, 48 kilometers an hour now, 0.6. Interesting on that corner, that wood ramp, you know, like that wood corner, the wall ride, you have to be in the middle, but so much geez into that corner with speed. By contrast, as I look out the commentary window, Rachel Afferton just spinning the legs on the bike. What? Getting ready for another crack at it. She's Rachel getting... Afferton the fastest so far in this semi. Yeah, Tani Seagrave all down the right-hand side, the jersey and trousers dirty. Monica doing her work done on the split three. 
Yeah, she's pulled some time back yes. there. Yes, yes. This is after motorway, then she did a good motorway. Lost quite a bit of time at the top, though. Lost a little bit more, it's split four. Oh, she did good on that corner. Less inside than the other women's. Prasnik lands the big gap comfortably. Really quick into the corner, flat corner. Really hard, you know, when used to berm, you know, like flat corner, a lot different to attack, you know, different, you know, you cannot go so fast into no. it. You, you need to have a feel of those tires. Rasnick then down to the line. Yeah, and she's look at that. After by Alfred and by two yeah. hundredths of a second. So she did, super fast in that final yeah, section. She looked really fast on the Aswood section, but she lost a lot of time at the top. This woman doesn't deal in losing time. Nina Hoffman for the Santa Cruz Syndicate, the German national champion. And let's don't forget, it is point to get in a semi-final. Really good for overall. You cannot cruise down and have a safe run. No, third in the semis last time out before backing it up with a third in the finals for Nina Hoffman. On that latest generation of Santa Cruz V10. They've worked a lot in making this bike a lot more neutral. Oh, a five second on split three. She's just been attacking that track like she did in practice. And Hoffman's is perfectly set up, as you can see. Five and a half, and she's in the 51 kilometers an hour. So yes. our first resident of the 50 kilometer in our club is Nina Hoffman. Wow, that's a great run for to Nina. To be fair, we could have guessed that one. Gives it absolutely everything, the German. And she's so strong, then she can end all this wood section. Her upper body is so strong. You can just see on the back of those white trousers as well, the mark from the rear tire from where it's buzzed. That's how far off the back of the bike they get in downhill. 7.8 oh, yeah. seconds. She's Cedric. just building a confident once she go down. Nina Hoffman on the run today. What is going through Rachel Afferton's head? And if you're watching this, what looked like what looked like a superb run for Afrin and being absolutely obliterated by Nina Hoffman here. And the speed, 51. Oh, it's dark, she went down. Hoffman's down, but she does have time to play with. She is a protected rider as well. So, those two corners, we say they were streaky. This is what's fascinating about the semi-final format. Hoffman still and down, still down. <laughs> into the hot seat. Rasnick, Afferton, your top three, but just keep an eye on Nina Hoffman to see if there's any any damage other than to her pride with that one. But oh, she's losing at, at least four in a corner. Rode in a knee brace last time out, dealing with a slightly blown knee. So hopefully that wasn't the one she went down on. But here is Camille Balanche then. Last week, she was telling me after the race, a little debrief. She was really upset about the second run. You know, no as a semi-final she did. Then big hard. jump from oh, big jump. there. Yes. Yeah, she went first in quali, first in the semi-final, and second in the final, losing out to that piece of mountain bike history by Rachel Affert. And so, Balanche for Comensal Dorval AM. Oh. Into the dark woods section now, and having to just tentatively Hover on the brakes, 49 kilometers an hour. But we have seen that there is time up there from that run of Hoffman, but... But yeah, 2.6 on so the split three means the motorway was not so good for her. I tell you, Cedric, Nina Hoffman looking ominous, but as we talk, she's still down in that finish area, holding that left knee. Well, I hope it's okay, though. We need her on the final. Hoffman absolutely tearing this Leo Gang track apart. Camille Balanche can't do anything about it. She's 3.4 back now. Yes, like Hoffman had a great wood section. Balanche looking good, but not fast enough so far. Camille Balanche, of course, former Winter Olympian, ice hockey player. Talent. Could do with some ice up in this commentary booth oh. at the minute. It is hot in here. But Camille Balanche for Switzerland, they missed out. At a win in her at her home round in Switzerland, hungry for a bit of revenge. Five hours up the road in the Lea Gang. Here she comes in down the finish line. Camille Balanche, what can she do today? Whoa! Oh. So there is time at that bottom yes. split. Yes, like where Nina maybe lost a little bit of time. Like she she attacked Balanche attack even harder. Cedric, what are we seeing here? Are we seeing these protected riders just keeping the powder dry for the race run. Do you think? No. 
Okay. I think it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's all in. It, well, speaking of all in, Valentina Ho, big off that one. She has spent her... Wow. Oh, she spent her life riding in this bike park. As I said at the top of the show, she knows all the lifties' first names. All her family and friends are here. Valentina Ho ominously chilled out this week. She fancies a win here at home in Lea Gang. Oh, she's on the good space. Like 1.3 on split three. On split time number three, 50k an hour. The 21 year old breaks the 50 kilometer an hour section through the speed trap. 1.3 seconds up now. The halfway point. Ah, oh, she looks steady. She looks amazing in his wood section. Look how aggressive Valentina Hall looks. That body just set loadless them, elbows out, eyes. Wow. Right to the end of the visor. I was quick there. Yeah. And seven tenths now, so it's gone back a little bit, yeah. but crucially, it's still green. It doesn't matter by how much, as long as it's green. Yeah, but we saw Balanos getting some time at the bottom. Can she do the same? Valley Hole over that big gap. What a style. Yeah, absolutely fantastic to watch Valley Hole. Scrub some speed off a wee Scandi flick as she heads down into this tricky bit where Nina Hoffman did have a tip over. This is the last of our elite women on track now. Is Valentina Hole going to go fastest in the semi final and grab some points? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Out one way back the other. Valentina Hole. So, so much time. 5.6 seconds. Takes the semi final win and the points. Cruises her way. That last wood section, so much Whoa. time you can make if you still have energy and hit the line you want. Well, it's mission accomplished so far for Valentina Hall. She's won the qualifiers. She's won the semi-finals. Just a one session remains to win, and that is the all-important final. Valentina Hall, Cedric, do you know what? I think she's more time up there. Definitely, because, you know, like we saw already with Camille Balance getting a lot of time on the last wood section, but basically the the last part, like we're talking about, you know, 25 or 30 seconds, you know, the, the last, last, last section. So much time, Valentina just shaved, yeah. just there. So those results there, I was just so distracted, looking out the commentary booth window. Nina Hoffman still hobbling, but taking time to get selfies and autographs with the fans. So hopefully she's all right for our elite women's downhill World Cup final. Valentina Hall, here's how she did it. Amazing replay. We see the, the bike is working perfectly. Diving into this travel like deep. Such a difficult place to set a downhill bike up for because we've got all these steep natural wood sections, but the thing's also got to absorb all those high speed landings and jumps on the motorway. Look oh, at this. Wow. <laughs> That's so beautiful. If that shot doesn't make you want to go out and ride a push bike, <laughs> I don't know what does. Valentino Ho. I just want to get my bike and go ride doing it her way and that is just about as stylish as it gets you see the the vibration going through the rear wheel when she lands let's hear from her now here is the last year in the lenta Heide, so let's keep it going like that cheers she said fucking valentina hole in apologies for the language but Eyes on the prize, she just wants to get back to the top. I think she'd do a race run now, wouldn't she? Yes, but uh, you know, like, you want to get focused now, it's two run in the day, then you know, you want to keep that momentum, the focus, go back to your pit, see your family, your mechanic, debrief and go. As I say that, she's all but sprinted out the finish area, high-fiving absolutely everyone. So Valentina Hall fired up and ready for finals here in Lea Gang. Had to nose the bike in to make the best lap backside there. Massive jump off there. Oh, she cleared those jumps so good, and she got a lot of speed using crucially, the back. Yeah. Crucially getting some pedal strokes in there as well. And look at her through this wood section. That's where she made the time at the bottom. Not here she was good, but at the, 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 list, the last part mm. there, it's just where a lot of time is. And it, she knows this terrain, Cedric, as well. Here she goes over the jump. You know, people do scraps as well, not only for style, just to keep the bike really low. Like, less airtime, better it is. Then, but you have to scrub. You can yeah. just not send it, like, pencil. <laughs> That's always my move, which tends to be quite low anyway. Thankfully, <laughs> Ricks don't fly, but... It is hotting up here in Liagang. 
absolutely baking conditions now. I'm, 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 I'm sweating. It's hot. I can see that. Yes. I can, <laughs> I can see that, sadly. I mean, but, that's racing, and that's how hot it is in there. Yeah, well, it's hot in here for us, but it is hotter at the top of the mountain. You can bet as the elite men get ready for their semi-finals runs. Look at the view. This is Leo Gang for you, Austria. Absolutely. If you, if there is one place that puts the mountain back in mountain biking, it is Leo Gang in Austria. Yeah, and uh, and the cows like that, you know, they probably have like perfect teeth, like uh, you know the size. Like when they eat the grass, it's like perfect everywhere. You know, like uh, it's like one millimeter higher. Okay, well, one man hoping for a huge result to back up. An absolutely huge result last time out is the UK's Jordan Williams. Is he headed for the hot seat in his first elite level World Cup? Jordan Williams crosses the line. Dakota Norton cannot believe it. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. I don't know if it's sunk in properly yet, but it's definitely sinking in day by day. Well, after my semi final run, I didn't actually think I could win it because I was ninth and a few seconds back on a good run. So I was going into the final, not sure if I was going to win and just hoping to put down the best run I could and hope for a top five. Is a man with a scintillating future ahead of him, Jordan Williams from the UK, from the southwest of England. And then I did put down my best run and I couldn't really do much better. It was pretty much a perfect run. Tight line again. Teammates with the fastest rider from the semi-final, Loic Bruni. Oh, size he's specialized fast. demo. He's fast. Yeah, I definitely wasn't pushing over the limits, but for me, it did feel like I was on the limits. I was pushing super hard. A flicker of he's emotion. doing it! He's 2.3 up now! He's doing it! But knowing that I wasn't going to go into a corner and blow the corner or mess up a section. Look at that! Jordan Williams is 2.3 seconds up in his first elite level. Is he heading for the hot seat in his first elite level World Cup? Jordan Williams crosses the line. Jordan Whoa! Williams goes into the hot seat. Troy Brosnan claps. Dakota Norton cannot believe it. I was hoping to get on the podium. I sort of knew it would be on the podium. And then the other riders on the hot seat were saying how good my run was. Um, the people on the side were saying that was amazing. And then rider by rider, um, it stayed there. And then towards the last few riders, I had some hope until Loic. It's time. This is it. Showtime. Loic Bruni, heart rate 145 beats per minute in the booth. The specialized gravity racer, he'll know that it's his own teammate, Jordan Williams. He's going to have to beat. And then Loic was 0.7 oh, up. Bastard! 7 tenths! Bruni is on one right from the top! And I thought oh, I'll get me. Um, but he didn't. And then, yeah, it was insane. 158 beats per minute from Lloyd Bruni off the drop. Which of the specialized gravity races is going to take it? Third! Third! He's third! Jordan Williams takes the win! Jordan Williams wins the opening UCI mountain bike downhill World Cup of the year. Uh, this weekend, I'm not expecting myself to go and win. I'm not expecting myself to do anything crazy again. Um, I'm just, I've won a World Cup now, so I want to just have fun and take the same approach as last week. Just have as much fun as I can and hope for the best. Here we go then, getting ready to go racing with the elite men semi-finals on way. Oni Renio from Finland will get us underway ahead of Baptiste Pierron. Sam Hill is in the mix on the number 88. Nuke proof, do not miss a second lap. Christopher Grice for Gen S specialised in there. Joe Braden from the UK on the intense factory racing machine. Antoine Vidal, 17th last time out, what can he do? Dante Silva for Canyon Collective Factory Team, a rider a lot of people are talking about this weekend. Just behind Cade Edwards in Quali for Trek Factory Racing. Greg Minar, hoping for so much more from him today. And then it's Bruni, Goldston, Jordan Williams in the mix as well. Lucas Shaw, Deprella, Kerr, Hart, Dylan Levesque, Ravelli, Johan Garçon. Garçon. 
Queen A, Walker and Palazzari. I said it was a bit of a mixed bag after that weather affected quality session, but big names left, right and centre, Cedric. Yeah, well, we're going to see Sam Hill. Then this is really, of course, like um, weather. I mean, that's racing. That's yeah. what it is. But it's so good to see me, him up there, you know, a legend. And it's going, you, you want to prove something, you know? He does indeed, he does indeed. Sam Hill, back in the downhill bike and back on your screens very, very shortly. The flat pedal thunder from down under will rejoin flat pretty pedals. soon. As we're getting ready to go racing with the Elite Men's semi-final here in Liagang, Austria, the sun's out. A little bit of wind at the finish line. A little bit of headwind, you can see the Red Bull windsock there, just in the yeah, kind of sideway, really, like uh, from, coming from the left side. Last time we had that wind come from the, the, the left side, the rain shot. But today, I think we're clear. I think it's looking good for a good day of racing. So if you are just joining us, we had a lot of weather yesterday. It really affected the junior race and the qualifying, but we head to the top now for our first rider of this elite men's semi-finals, Oni Ranio from Finland on that pole bike. Oh, doing great here. Like, that's what you want to do. You want to try to double all this, and you know, like compressions. If you're somebody who has a few days off their life oh. to lose to good YouTube videos, then you need to go and check out pole and their approach to making bikes absolutely revolutionary and really challenging what is the perceived industry norms, this Finnish brand. You are definitely attacking the top part. Yep, there is going to be all out now. So this is a semi-final format, which means 60 riders will get whittled down to 30 plus, however many of those protected riders are outside of that. So in theory, the maximum we could have is 39 through to the finals today. Uh, we're missing one, of course, Omri Pierron. Exactly. And uh, let's see where Ranio makes of this motorway section. I saw him through this whoop section during practice, fully committed on the pole. Well, he was committed on the first part already. Yep. That's good to see, you know, taking the chance. Really low over the front end of the yeah, bike. Oh, land into ah. the corner, like into the big wall ride. You can get so much speed off those wall rides, but it really, it's one of the best places. Jumps into the woods, <laughs> back end of the bike, says whatever the finish is for no, but <laughs> He uh, manages to get a gallard up, so yeah, standing by those wall oh, rides. Nice one there, like doubling down. One of the best places to watch downhill mountain bike race and the energy that goes into yes. that wooden yes. wall ride. Big feel, like you, you, you have goosebumps when you hear all those people just cheering at you. And it's so steep there. So steep through this new wood section. We saw really the second half of this track in the elite women's semi-final was where so much of the time was generated. Nina Hoffman in particular, lighting it up through here. Yeah, a lot of time. A lot of time on the last wood section. You need to you need to have that energy though to be able to do it. Yeah, here we go. Scrub off some speed before this tricky flat left. Just dabs there slightly. Renio. Oh, that left corner is start to be dangerous because it looked like it's still a little bit tacky in inside. But <laughs> the end, the end of the corner is start to be already dusty. Yeah, so that's a 315.029. 3.15. So just for comparison, and Davide Palazzares. First place quality run from the weather affected yesterday was 3 minutes 11.7. So we will see times tumble here in Liagang. Another fast from the family. Another is, fast peer yeah, They yeah, only make fast peer runs. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Definitely, yeah, like we said last week, uh, you need to rush to the dinner because yeah, everyone you, is so fast. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get to the dinner quickly in the peer on household because he, Baptiste, this is, is 3.3 seconds now to the good. No armory. Hopefully, we will hear for him later in the broadcast. He is apparently back in Lea Gang after that neck back injury sustained in Lenzerheide at the first round. But his brother's on track now for Dorval Comensal AM. A lot of time made on split four. Little manual over the line goes into the hot seat. Four seconds quicker than the fin. Great wood section. Yeah, really, really good. So hard to basically don't lose time at the top and be able to have still that big energy to Here just he attack. Mr. Gasta Flat himself, Adam Brayton from the Lake District in the UK. Whoa! Oh, Brayton. 
Then they get on the big table, uh, tabletop at the top. You don't get the nickname Gasta Flat by hanging about. <laughs> Here comes the Keswick Kestrel. Why is Dean in the green on split four? Some brilliant race runs from Brayton oh. here over the years. <laughs> Limit on grips there on oh. the left corner. You felt, you see that back wheel just looking for grip. Yeah, nearly 54 kilometers an hour now. Pedaling in the mid in mid air for Brayton down to the line. And it's done Into the hot seat. Adam Brayton. 310.369. He's still suffering slightly with a, an injury to uh, the right hand side of his body, but shouldn't impair him getting into the hot seat. Busquet! Busquet Pau. for Comensal Schwabel. Schwabel, excuse me. Oh. Really good rider as well. When we get confident, it's going to be dangerous. And that's what he's doing right there on split three. One second on split three, less a little bit of time on four. Yeah, the 20-year-old lighting him up green here in the semi-finals. On the hunt for a place in our elite finals coming to you later on this afternoon. This little flat turn where they're... Oh. oh, they're getting fast and faster in those corners. You could just see the front wheel understeering there, losing grip, pushing him wide, but Busquets gets it gathered up. But that corner, I think, at the top of that drop in, Cedric, that is maybe where we're seeing some of the speed come from in this last section, because you can just lose a few kilometers an hour yeah, there alone. Exactly, just in a few corners there, and it's so steep that you can lose quite a bit of time. But they're already in the, like the, the limit on that corner. You cannot go faster on that corner. You will lose the grip. Harry Malloy then, Continental Nuke, Pro, Nuke Proof Factory Racing, whatever the equivalent of a, a player manager is in Downhill Mountain Biking, it's Harry. Spends so much of his time just managing the team, managing the riders, and still getting time to throw a leg over the Nuke Proof and race the big bikes with the best in the world. Impressive, huh, to have uh, so many hats on. Yeah, this man, oh. <laughs> he has got quite a hat collection, I'll give you that. <laughs> 2.9 on speed four. 53 kilometers an hour, yeah. Continental Nuke Proof, one of the really good news stories here in the pits from recent years. A family team set up. Harry Malloy's joined and is really helping Chris Cummins and co push this team to bigger and better things. And we have got one of the most electrifying riders in downhill on his way very shortly for you. Ronan Dunn, Harry's teammate. Malloy crosses the line into four, three seconds back. Harry Malloy then. The finish line, it's getting uh, more and more crowded. Nice to see everyone is so happy to be here, see racing on the sunny day. This yeah. is what you want, fair and square racing. Luke Mumford then from the UK, number 123. A lot of UK riders. You can see how yeah, choppy yeah, yeah. that it, first yeah, section you is. You see those rocks, like it basically took off the rock from the edge of the, um, the off camber. Saw a huge crash for Eris van Leeuwen in the uh, junior women's race yes. yesterday, where it's so easy on that top section, that off camber section, to get pushed to the bottom off, and then all of a sudden you have to go tight, tight left, and she just got bucked and sent to the other side of the road. Yeah, because it's not, you know, it's a big off camber, but a lot of compression in that off camber then you have to work the bike like it's you cannot just be uh, the passenger and just no. pray no it's got a little bit of everything this Leo gang track it really really does there's pretty much here he is then Ronan down Done. from Ireland and he's turning the screens green oh he lands oh. oh on that one as I say one of the most exciting young mountain bike talents in downhill at the minute Ronan Don on a run here and that's the motorway for you you see it's not straight and a lot of jump a lot of momentum you have to carry the national champion off Ireland as you can see from that sleeve just lands slightly short there on the 32 nuke proof so fast into that wall ride why oh, oh, send it big straight into the woods oh that was really good so fast. Got the message one day from Chris Cummins. When, oh, 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 he's getting... <laughs> when he was at school, actually, to see if he wanted to go racing last year, and he went, yeah, go on, I'll give it a go. And he's <laughs> never looked back from there on out. Yeah, 55.9 kilometers. That's how fast he's going down this wood section. 55 kilometers an hour. <laughs> Ronan done 1.9 seconds to the good in the semi-final here. He isn't protected, so he will need a good run here, Ronan Dunn. 
And two point eight now. I mean, that's that's a big gap. It's a big gap yeah. from a man who loves big gaps. Yeah. Ronan Dunn on the move. The Irish national champion. Looking good on the bike, so active. Just trying to tell the bike, go faster, go faster. Down to the line now, Ronan Dunn. He'll take off here, keeps it low over that to get more pedal strokes in. Ronan Dunn crosses the line and into the hot seat by nearly 3.6 seconds. Three or six, it's He's fast. Nods the head, he knows that was a good clean one. And that will give him a good chance of going through to the finals, I think. Cedric, so good to see that when a rider crosses the line, nodding the head, knowing that, yeah. Yep. To who are Ricky Penny for New Zealand now from MS Mondraker as they're coming thick and fast in this elite men's semi final. Oh, nose heavy off that one. Yes. You know, it's so hard, you know, when you pass the finish and, you know, you give everything you had and, and, and you couldn't do much more. You know, it's. You're happy. The result is what it is, but, you know. You, at least you give everything you had. I think it's one of, the, one of the most interesting juxtapositions of downhill racing is you're racing against the best riders in the world, but in reality, you're racing against yourself. You've got exactly. to put your best yep. run down in order to beat them. And I know that's something that we talked about last week that Fabian Burrell always said was that he only ever raced himself and he won races and drove home angry because he didn't think the run was perfect. <laughs> and you raised the time too. You yeah. know, like competition is, you have to, you have to beat the clock. Okay, so to Huto Arike Pene down, three tenths outside the fastest time currently set by Ireland's Ronan Dunn. It's, it's nice to see smiles at the finish line. Definitely a better day than yesterday. Definitely a better day than yesterday. And, and, and great for the mechanics today because, you know, they, they have to work on the bike right away. They don't have to, because, you know, when you come at the finish line and your bike is like full of mud, you know you're going for a full rebuild. One minute. Yeah, it was all hands to the pumps in the pits this morning as everyone tried to figure out what this track would do. Greg Williamson wearing the national champ sleeve off the UK, back on track now for Madison Saracen Williamson. Has been suffering slightly with a sinus infection. The big man from Inverness. 3.8 back. 3.8 back for Williamson. Let's just be prepared of seeing some tight racing today. It's going to be hard to get into the final. It feels like one of those days now. It does feel like one of those days where that's the thing about, as I said in the, the women's race, Bruni called it earlier in the weekend. He said, Lenzer Hyde. Oh, oh, yeah, clipped. Oh, I could have been oh. not really wrong there. Oof. Christopher Philogen. Wow. Oh. That could have been horrible. I've seen people yes. run over their ankles doing that, actually. Yeah. Five yeah. seconds on split four. Wow. There well, you that see, was, that was... clipped momentarily and lost loads and loads of time. That was... Whew. A whip going oh, wrong. A whip gone wrong for Philogene. Down the line now. Five seconds back off running down. I think that might be the South Africans' day done. But yeah, as I was saying, Bruni pointed it out himself. Lenzer Hyde, Alia Gang. Can't lose time anywhere. Nope. Leger, Mont Saint Dan. He's got the opportunity to make it back, but. Yeah, and being able to do two runs like that. Oh, he went no. down. Down in that right-hand corner, there's like four stairs yeah. on the way into that. I was but. looking at that corner. Look how deep is it right in the beginning, and it's really skinny, and you have just the wood now sticking out. Then it, be careful oh. there. It's not oh, much the frame's there. gone. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. tube's broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. That's what I was telling you. Oh, that'll oh. do it. If you look at that big oh, down yeah. tube in the bottom of that yep, scot, yep, it's just, just gone. Wow. Maybe from... Try to jump on yeah. the bike and then, yep. Maybe the tube just hit that big log. I don't think they're going to take that one back under warranty, you know. <laughs> that is done. Yep. Racing machine. Yeah, they are fast, fast bikes, but you can just hit them at the wrong angles every now and again. Uh, and exactly, that be, yeah. especially on the, on, the, on the big log. I think, yeah. it, I think the bike hit the log. Well, Greg Menard, Val de exactly. Sole, whenever he, Same. he it was detonated a bike in the last run before his race run. Yes. They rebuilt another bike for him within 40 minutes, and 
he qualified at three tenths back off Aaron Gwynn, and that's what makes him the GOAT. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine mentally? No, I can't. Because you remember that noise, <laughs> yeah, that noise of, you know, like of the oh. carbon going into that big hole. And as you said with Marine Cabiru, who was badly injured here last time out, being able to shut that out. Yes. So, so difficult and so you impressive. You have to be strong mentally, Ian. But here we go, everyone. It's the flat pedal thunder from down under. Sam Hill is back on a downhill back, and he is back on your screens in 2023 for Nuke Proof Shram Factory Racing, one of the greatest most pivotal riders in the sports history, the master of line choice. On the whole time and so much creativity when you see you already have like different line. This is Sam Hill on track. Never ever in doubt as to his position as one of the sports all time greats, free Enduro World Series crowns back to back after having won pretty much everything in downhill and really dragged the sport into a new direction of line choice and Famously, if never everybody else was going slow in, fast out, Sam was going fast in, faster out. And just, you know, his attitude as well was just like what mountain bike it needed it at the time. Showing up and only only do four runs in practice when everyone was trying to do like nine or ten. It was just impressive and it was hard for the other racers. Yeah, three times a downhill world champion. Two times a downhill world cup champion. Two Junior Downhill World Championships and those three Enduro World Series titles, as I mentioned. Palmares do not get much more impressive, but with Hill, it was never, it was never so much about the championships as just about how he rode a downhill bike. 5.4 back, but just great to see him back on our screens. And still running the same shoes. The 37 year old, yet flat pedal, so he won't clip onto the bike the way that so well basically everyone else yes. does now and so hard to control the bike too especially there in this section you need to use your heel like a lot more than when you clipped in and um, yeah the pedaling you know it's just harder and keep the bike under your feet as well is harder especially on those braking bumps you have your feet like basically flying on the front of your pedal the not a problem for sam hill the 37 year old australian then coming down the line He is not protected, so this might be the last we see of Hill today, but it was great to see him back on a downhill bike. Sam Hill crossed the line, nine seconds back off Ronan Dunn's time. Sam Hill, one of the all-time greats of the sport, back on a downhill bike, back at a UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. Back in all our hearts. Yes, it, this is out, you know, this show you as well, how mountain bike it went so quick in the last years like you see it's when sam hill is like nine seconds back with the talent he have with everything he have i mean still a sam hill on the bike but just this new generation it's just incredible well after this broadcast get yourself on youtube go and look for sam hill's 2008 val de sole run oh. one of the all-time great race runs ever put down and uh, I remember that last corner in Val de Somme. He was coming so fast. It's like he'd been launched off one of yeah. those like steam <laughs> yes. catapults that they have on Air Force. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It was everyone at the finish that like, couldn't believe their eyes of what they were seeing of like you know the greatest of the greatest of, uh, greatest of mountain biking. The replays actually don't do it justice because you need to see the few runs before it to see the speed differential. Just absolutely unbelievable. Sam Hill back with us here in Lee again. Great to see it. We're going to head now back to the top where we have got Elliot Vallon, the Scott Downhill factory team. Good team that put together the Scott team this year with Marin, and it's a lot of fast rider there. Yeah, as well, we've got um, a lot of those fast French riders looking for teams, and Scott seemed to be doing a really good job at gathering them all together. Oh, wow. almost went off on the other way on the right side. Florent Paye on track throughout practice, one of the one of the greats really, the yes. unmistakably the unmistakable figure of the really tall Reunion Islander who rode for this team for so long, helping this team now on the side of the track. And yeah, good eye on track and uh, really he know how to explain things as well in a quiet way. And um, what was good with Flo Payette is like when he started to have the bike, who was 
the proper dimension for him, yeah. like a double or triple XL. He was so he fast. He got better as his career yeah, went on. Exactly. Yeah, Shimano did a fantastic little video actually about him. I saw online as well, catching up with him and his time at ra in racing. And as you say, that hunt for the bigger bike. And as soon as he got that, never looked back. But by all now, nearly nine seconds back at split four. Yeah. Not going his way today. No, it's hard. It's fast at the front already. And uh, we're going to see a lot of those today. Track went faster. It's getting faster and faster. But I'm a little bit concerned about that corner when we see the log there where... Um, it's disappearing. Yeah, yeah, it's disappearing. It's just the logs now, the dirt is gone. So we have, just a reminder then, 60 men in this semi-final. 30 plus whoever is protected on outside of that 30 will go through to the final later on this afternoon. Elliot Vallon, 16, 10 plus. Just watching Sam Hill being mobbed in the finish area. He's, he's going to do well to get out of here, actually. Everybody wants a selfie with Sam. Here is Remy Meyer Smith, the one of the biggest natural talents in downhill racing at the minute, riding for Jam Factory off road. It's a revival from the bike from the early days. Do you know what's missing? The red fork. That's what's <laughs> yes, missing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Remember those days? I couldn't put my finger on it until somebody pointed it out to me. It's the red fork that bike's missing and the retro colors yeah. for Giant, but. Having a good team too. Remy Meyer Smith on board here for Giant Factory. He's in he's in contention now. Yes, he's in contact and he's attacking that wood section. Be careful that corner. You see that. Whoa. You see that line. Yeah. So tight and only logs. Then you have to release the brakes. Like that log is so slippery. Meyer Smith then, his older brother, Luke out with a broken collarbone. Oh he's he's giving some there. And it's working so far also has to deal with the pressure of having the constant stream of positivity from Josh Carlson in his pit yeah, every morning. Exactly. Another man who is uh, irreplaceable. Right. Carlson everywhere. <laughs> they do the enduro, he's there. Oh, amazing. There's, there's a lot of Carlson around here in Leo Gang at the minute, but 54.8 kilometers an hour through the speed trap for Remy Meyer Smith from Australia. Carlson, we talked about him the other night in the hotel, actually, Remy, and he said just the natural talent levels are just through the roof as he comes down to the line. Meyer Smith in the third, that might be enough. Yeah. That was a solid run, I have to say. Really like, good run. Really good run. Really coming of age now as well. You just see him with every race getting that little bit more experienced. Yeah, yeah. and more confidence, it's good for you. Preston Williams on track now from the UK. So hard to don't launch that one too far. A lot of people have problems there. The 20 year old. See how fast this motorway section is. It's getting yeah. faster as it dries out, Cedric. As exactly. Well, isn't it? You know, now it dry after the rain. It's even more packed, then it's a lot more speed. And those jumps are getting smaller and smaller now. 5.2 off on split four. One of the key parts of downhill, of course, is managing a track as it evolves and as it changes with the weller and, you know, not an easy skill in itself. It's all in your head too, you know? You have to go with the flow sometimes and just uh, let it go. And when it's like that fast, you know, yeah, you want to go, you're like, yeah, maybe it's too fast, it's too fast, but you know, that's this is, you have to be committed, and today it's going to be a lot faster because it's packed after the rain. I'll go on Vila, Sebastian. I'm surprised this off camber just got one line this year. Used to be two or three line there. Now it's one line and everyone is hitting the same. It's start to be a little bit broken there. A lot more compression due of the braking, of course. More you break, you create those braking bumps. Those two corners here, like, it's they're entering so fast. This okay. man has spent a lot of time with one of the heroes of Colombian mountain biking, Chiguero himself, Chiguero Extremo. He's watching at home, cheering his rider on as he heads down the line now. Where will the Colombian stack up? Just 4.8 seconds back. Sebastian Hogan Vila for Colombia. Definitely does. Colombian, Chilean, so good in urban racing. And it's they, good to see them there as well, in the dirt. Urban downhill, so, so big. 
Mountain biking is so, so big in Colombia, actually. Yeah. It was there four or five years ago for enduro and just the the reaction we received and the uh, the passion. Yeah, of the and Chile races. as well. Chile oh. is like big community of riding, riders. Joe Breeden then from somewhere you couldn't get much more polar different from Colombia from the Forest of Dean in the UK for intense factory racing teammates of Aaron Gwynn and Dakota Norton. Breeden, very, very fast. A massive young talent. Ooh. Hot breaking here. Oh, Lance, a little bit too much in the left. I think the right line when you land there, it's in the inside. It's no roots there. But really hard to aim it, especially when you jump from really bright into basically a dark room. Yeah, there you go. There's that corner Cedric mentioned with the oh, oh what big a line inside. There. He used uh, like the tree almost. Well, sadly, we're missing Reese Wilson from action today, but that was a Reese Wilson esque maneuver. Just pulling the bike up, setting himself up really, really wide. Nearly 55 kilometers an hour through the speed trap for Breeden now. Looking good. He used that tree like a water ride. I'll tell you what, Cedric, though, that run of Ronan Dunn is holding up really yes, well. There's some no. good scrutiny here. It, 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 that's, that's a solid run. It's going to be, I mean, it's hard to beat. Look, 3.1, split four, and he was looking good at the top. Now, there's a thing about the semi finals. If you're unprotected, you do not have the luxury of just. Uh, Rolling down and getting a sighter. You need to put these runs down and get give yourself the best chance of making the big show whilst collecting some points. Joe Breeden crosses the line 3.3 seconds back. Managed to stem the loss of time, but never made any back either. Yeah, enough for four so far. Yeah, rolls the head around. Not sure if he's overly happy with that. Antoine Vidal, then, one of the biggest talents to come out of France, a country full of big talents at the minute when it comes to mountain biking. And this young man, it's good on every bike you give him. Everything, enduro, downhill bike. You could send him out on a unicycle and he'd get you a good result. <laughs> yeah, Antoine yeah. Vidal for Commissar Les Or. The team managed by Cedric and Cecile Ravanel themselves. Absolutely rapid. So, so he was 13th last time out in Lenzerheide. A great result for him. Vidal, an absolutely meteoric talent now. Watch him into these woods. 1.2 on speed three, it's time, go to business. 56 kilometers an hour, near enough for Vidal. Let's see what he can do in the woods. Oh, nice one doubling down with second rider. We see yeah. doing that. Absolutely superb on an enduro bike. We saw him collecting multiple under 21 race wins and championships. 1.2 seconds back at split three. Back in, trying to get away from him, just brings it back in line oh. nicely. Get back twice in a row here. Yeah, 1.6 back now for Vidal. Bring a little bit more time. Right, it's a lot of time. To, you can still do at the bottom of the this wood section. We'll see. 14 for the Worlds in Leger last season. He's playing with the limit here. He really is, yeah. That's that's very much Antoine Vidal's preferred yes. uh, hobby as he comes down this final jump will we see Vidal through to the finals again here in Leogang crosses the oh, line oh he made a lot of time at the bottom slots in the fourth place so not point nine back off done that could yeah. be all right yeah, that I could hold up he I mean he was 1.6 and on the last section of the wood section he did an incredible job did some good work down there as we see Theo Erlingson from South Africa who was throwing some backflips last time out in Lenzerheide. What can he do? Big rider, big talent. We see a lot of more, more, more and more South African we riders. We are, yeah. None of them as fast as Greg Menard, though. No, it's only one goat. <laughs> There's only one goat in South Africa. <laughs> and it's on the bike. Seven seconds back now, Erlingson. Big it's, man, no? It's, yeah, I mean, big dude. It's yeah. just, the motorway section, I just saw them through there, and it's deceptive looking because it looks like they're chilling all the way through it, but when you stand beside it during practice and it take the air out of your lungs yeah, to speak, yes. they go past it's you. just the noise of the bike, you yeah. know, hitting those roots, just a boom, boom. It's, it's impressive. Downhill bikes so quiet now as well compared to what they used to be whenever you were uh, hanging off the back of them. <laughs> yes, they don't have a chin slap anymore. No. They, they have a little cushion now <laughs> to avoid that noise. You just hear the tires on the ground. Yeah. 
and there aren't many better noises than that noise either as Erlingson down the line that might be all she wrote for him as we see Max Hartenstern now for Cube Factory Racing the German such a great rider and Timmy Matt with Danny Hart it can be only good for you learning from the best yeah learning from Danny Hart Hartenstern He's been around the sport for quite a few years. He's been on Cube for a long time. A lot of prototype stuff going on with that bike, including some... Uh, and and he's and fast! Some, he's a, fast! He's in touch, isn't he? Yeah, Matt. Some prototype tyres for uh, Cube Factory Racing this season, as well as some little CNC bits and bobs yeah. on the bike. These yeah. top downhill race bikes being used to develop the stuff that you and I can go out and pedal at the weekends. Every race, great to see. Second so far for Matt Asterson. Oshina Callahan then for the YT mob. Whoa. Wow, what a whip! Young Irishman in a hurry. <laughs> Unbelievable bike skills. He can whip both sides, no problem. Usually no you have problem, only one but... side you get, but he it's can do both. 1.4 back. I wonder if that last one just didn't come round in time for him. May have slowed his progress into this wood section slightly. O'Callaghan. I'm so impressed about the speed, like around 54, 55 into this wood section. It's really impressive. Absolutely huge, isn't it? That definitely went on some harder compression on those suspension today. So we are already quicker than the fastest qualifying time now. Just hearing from the bottom, Rory Cunningham telling us that it, the course conditions apparently are absolutely perfect. We've seen a couple of the Red Bull wind socks just Hanging loose, so not a breath of wind up there. Yeah, it's packed for due of the rain yesterday. It's getting faster and faster than put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a big day. Toby Meek for MS Mondraker on track now. Marcus Stuckel's team, one of the most experienced team bosses in the pits. Let's see what the young Kiwi can do. Well, he was quick at split one, but it's moved away from him slightly now. Yeah, 1.4 at split four. You know, when you have that sleeve, it means like you're the best of your country. Means you're good. Means you're pretty good. New Zealand, yes. a, you couldn't throw a stone right there without hitting a fast mountain bike rider. Yes. Let's see what Meek can do then as he heads down the line. Six, 1.6. 6. So that frontless race really tightening up the first five on the same second in the semi finals here for the men. Back to the top. It's Jack Piercy. Jack Piercy from the UK via France. Commensal Les Or. Another meteoric young talent. Spends a lot of time riding with Antoine Vidal. The two of them very, very close. Yeah, Skill set, every big. Every bit as big as Vidal's 2.5 back, though. Kind of similar of riding style between it. Uh, Vidal and Jack Piercy. Yeah, Piercy. The two of them have a lot of fun together, and just front wheel, back wheel, it doesn't <laughs> matter to these boys. They just go hard all the time. Piercy down the line. Can he pull some time back in the last split to try and get into the finals here? Ronan Dunn's 306 is standing up. Jack Piercy slots in an eighth. So not a bad run. 2.6 back. I mean, if you think about it, 2.6 is it's it's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It takes me longer to get out of a chair these yeah. days. <laughs> Simon, Simon Chapelet, excuse me then, for Cube Factory Racing. A very, very fast young rider. Promising rider from France. Chapelet. It's a fast name, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So we are hearing reports from the course that the, the wind is picking up, but it's behind the riders on the motorway, which is why we're seeing some of them go longer, but that will only make it faster as well. Yeah, but that's what you want. You prefer to have the, the wind in the back, or, but definitely not in the front, and definitely not sideways, especially due to the size of those jumps. Yeah, well, this is a mountain sport. Dealing with these conditions is part of it. Simon Chapelet then down to the line, 2.6 oh. behind Ronan Dunn. Everyone is on the 2.6 so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's really tight. Ronan Dunn's put a run down here. Yes. Phil Atwell in for Pro Positive. 
just amazing skills. Yeah, one of one of the most skillful riders out there. Started his own team, doing it with a lot of young Greek riders. That's where he lives out there now these days. And looked good last week too. Yeah, Phil's looking fast this season. Yeah, capable, but he's 3.3. 3.3 back. back, yeah, for Atwell. Another rider who has been on the scene for some time now. And wow, that wow. breaking area was so, so good and way inside. Not extra terrain here like, hey, Generally, I'm getting in. <laughs> the strangest shots you will see off Phil are whenever both wheels are on the ground as he heads down the line. Now Phil Atwell from the UK crosses the line, three and a half back. 11, enough for 11. Enough for 11, so. That's the top 10 covered by three and a half seconds. We are in the men's semi-final end, so we are gonna be taking 30 riders plus any protected riders outside of that. Look at this Whoa. slow motion. Wow. That is the kind of commitment levels it takes to get through that first route section. Ronan Dunn, who else? Love it, love it. Like when they land, you see the pressure, you know, on the tire. Yeah. Oh, so much details there. Look at the, it, the, the eyes. expression of the eyes. Yeah. Like just looking where he's going, not even blinking. Yeah, the, the bike going exactly where the eyes are looking. Every little object already well processed and under control before the next bit. Oh, and he's keeping low. He jumped everything, but not too high. This is produced a, a fit. A fantastic video with uh, Tommy Caldwell from the UK called Dangerous Things Done Safely. This is how it is looking at the minute then. Ronan Dunn for Continental Nuke Proof Factory Racing leads the way just ahead of Max Hartenstern. Phil Atwill in 11th. Oliver Zwar 13th. Greg Williamson, the UK national champion, down in 14th, just ahead of Adam Brayton. Harry Malloy, 24th. George Brannigan up in 21st. It's going to be a tight battle to be yeah. able to go into the final. Dare I say it, wow. a very mature run from Ronan Dunn. Yes, no, no. It, exactly it, 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 what he needed, put yeah. himself at the front of the conversation. Do you think you have more in the bag for the final? Who knows of Ronan? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's a very big bag, I know that. <laughs> Valentin Chatonet then leaves the start hop for France. Oh, setting up, up high like his underbys, quite high. Valentin, Chatelet. Yeah, bike set up. Really dark art here in Leah Gang because, whoa, pulls up over that little triple on the way out. So this is where we are getting reports that there's a tailwind now. So just with that big jump, you can see him just getting pushed further yes. down the back of that jump slightly. Really hard to keep it low here. You want to make that backside of the jump just to get, you know, some extra speed. But definitely look at the line, the, like the main line is so packed. It's, it's like concrete. It's absolutely bullet fast up there. We started this weekend talking about how track here in Leogang may just be running the fastest of any mountain bike downhill World Cup track. He's back on 3.3 on the split too. That was, that's before um, the motorway. Yeah, and, and then, five after the motorway. And then we, we got that massive, two massive deluges of rain yesterday during the junior race and qualifying. It's given us this really shuffled pack here in the semi final. So some riders from lower down the order having really good conditions yesterday and being oh. right up in amongst the biggest names in the business. It just makes it all the more exciting for us and you at home. Entering really fast on those, you know, tech section, but he's breaking really hard too. Then it's like on and off, on and off. And I think today you need to be like consistent in his wood section and increasing your speed. His conditions looking perfect in the woods. Yeah, prime, prime. We prime saw them definitely. actually being really challenging early in the weekend because they were so dry that they were actually crumbly and dusty. Whereas up there at the minute, looks perfect. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more grip than the beginning of the week. And uh, it's going to drag quick, and that main line is going to be, like I say, it's like, uh, yeah, concrete almost. Yeah, plenty of speed left up there here in Leogang, Salzburger land, as Chatonet comes down the line, 5.6 back on Don now. I would love to know what kind of pressure the guys are running compared to yesterday, and swell for 
great uh, suspension setup. I know the guy's been working really hard, you know? Yeah, Roger Vieira leaves the start hot now, the Brazilian. Spent a lot of time in the UK. Well, funny enough, you should ask that, Cedric. I did do a bit of uh, poking about earlier on. The team from Fox telling me that the, the going is a bit firmer for the most part, so the speed is lower. You're hitting things at an awkward angle instead of skipping over it. Yes. And a lot of the lines have opened up, so not just as much of a precision game as we saw yesterday. And I think they have to tweak a lot of high speed stuff as well. And uh, that's why you see all those bikes with uh, telemetry on board. This is going to help you to set up the bike or at least have the bike balanced the way you want and get focus on your run and study after when the bike is set up, you know? Yeah, study so the track. We're into our top 30 now from Quali. So a lot of these riders did get down the track in better conditions than when the rains came yesterday and Cedric and I had to die for cover as the commentary <laughs> booth filled up with water around <laughs> us, but... It was a kind of a little swimming pool. Yep, and here is Davide Capello. Rogue racing after Skull team. Whoa! Whoa almost Just went off track there. Out keeping her on the island there, but his teammate, Palazzaro, was the fastest qualifier from yesterday. He couldn't get physically underneath that stem anymore if he tried. Trying to generate as much speed down here as possible. Even that, you know, like being able to do like the, the tech, you know, like speed, you still have to look where you're going. You just have your eyes over your handlebar. Yeah. 5.5 back into split four. It has basically lost time in every section, but it's, it's, it's hard today. This is where the uh, the semi-final format is really, really interesting, Cedric, because we've got some riders in here who wouldn't be this high up the order normally who, do you know what? They might just fancy a crack at this one. They might fancy a chance to make their names in front of the fastest teams in the world. Yes, and that's an opportunity with this new format. And hard, like, you know, when listen, Bruni and Louis Bruni is saying, like, how oh, hard it is to do two perfect runs. Yeah. So Fer hard. Fernando Juan Munoz then, from Colombia, another rider who spends a lot of time with Chiguero, one of the absolute legends of Colombian downhill. Well, sometimes in wood section. It's so much for these uh, South American riders, such a big trip to come all the way over to Europe to go racing at the highest level here in the UCI Mountain Bike World Series and oh, seeing yeah. them right up and amongst it. That corner, that last corner before the last speed section uh, exiting that, uh, that wood, that just uh, those two corners in the wood, it's getting really dry and dusty already. 5.5 5. 5 seconds back for the Colombian then. Sam Blenkinsop then, the bike rider's bike rider from New Zealand. So stylish. He have gloves on. Yeah, it must be a regulation, maybe different yeah. uh, national federations. It... He's famous for racing gloveless. Blenkinsop just uh, gets some dust over the hands at the top and cracks on, but different federations have different rules all around the world, so maybe it is part of the required safety equipment. Seven seconds back, but 54 kilometers an hour. Not hanging around Blenkinsop. And the signature move from Blenkinsop is pedaling in the air. Yeah, just a great rider to watch. Oh, yeah, just he's the kind of rider you look at him riding, you want to grab your bike and try to do the same. And he, he yeah. rides a bike the way you think you ride a bike, but you don't. <laughs> in your head, Well, me. you maybe do, I don't no. anyway. There we go, no. Blenkinsop down the line then. 7.6 seconds back on Ronan Dunn's time, so. And he's already 30. Upcoming riders then, Dante Silva, Kate Edwards, Suarez Alonso, Greg Minar himself. Plenty to cheer on. Here is Dante Silva from the USA for Canyon Collective Factory Team. Oh, Whoa. oh you see that rock flying on the left. Really crumbling now, that top section. It could be pivotal because everything else looks like it's packing down now. Yes. Canyon Collective, I've got a lot of faith in, the, faith in this youngster, excuse me. Doing good on those jumps, staying really low. But is it paying off? 1.3 back, so not impossible for Silva from here on down. No, it's... I think this corner, Cedric, I think... And this one coming... Yeah, uh, these two. This one, the, the exit of it. If you go offline a little bit, it's just dusty and powder. Those two, you lose just one or two kilometers an hour in them, and you're not making it back, and it snowballs down the line for Dante Silva. 1.9 back on Dunn's time. Eight so far for Dante Silva from the United States. Yes. 
Here we go then, Cade Edwards from Huddersfield in the UK. Spends his time in North Wales, Trek Factory wow. Racing, Gravity Rider. Huge double down on the bike, he's just incredible. One of the most likeable riders in the pits and one of the most skillful, has spent the last two weeks basically oh, always been down. off. Edwards has been off. So we could see some style on the way down here yeah. now. Maybe a suicide no hander or like a condor signature move. Co uh, concussed himself in Lenzer Heide last year. Look at that, sliding oh, the front they end wheels, that. Uh, Yeah, no problem for him. Absolutely no problem. Just natural bike handling. Kid Edwards, one of the very, very best in the world. What did we do here? Yeah, yeah. kid. Oh, let Down me the really line. Deep. Basically crossed the line in midair oh, there, Kate Edwards. He made a mark too. Look at the mark at yeah. the bottom. He led sideways. Well, he's left his mark on this track, oh. and there is that crash. Yeah, front lost, end. Lost the front there. Front end cried no more, but he was hitting that turn at some pace. Kate Edwards crosses the line, one of the very best. I spent the last two weeks wheeling about on an electric shopping bike, dismantling it from the saddle. <laughs> OK, can this man keep, keep the pilot together today? And there he goes, Suarez Alonso then, the Spaniard, riding for Uno Racing. He just needed to make it happen. Yeah, he's Go been to on, the bottom. He's been on the cusp for so long now, such oh. raw, natural speed. Suarez Alonso yeah. had a really promising first half yeah. of the race in Liga Gang at the start of the year. It's done. It's nine. Something went wrong. Something has it, gone wrong for the 27-year-old up there. Wood section. Yeah, ended up 27th last time out. Suarez Alonso down the line. Be disappointed with that one. Just trying to see if I can see dirt on him. Yeah. Oh, we might well, see oh. it here. Jumps into the wood. Oh, here we go. Off track. Yeah. He went off. There we go. On the bridge. The same that happened to Greg Minar. Yesterday, but he just the tree we see on camera that's where Greg Mima, uh, Mina went. Yeah, bike just letting go on him there. But here, there we is go, talking about the goat. Here's aforementioned goat, then Greg Minar for the Santa Cruz Syndicate on track now. 42 years young, four looks world fast. champs, titles, three World Cup overall titles. Oh, he looks good. Greg Minar looks there. We go, he did seven hundreds to the good against Rudin Dunn here. Greg Minar in the elite men's semi finals. Making his way down the line, what can Greg stop the clock at? Oh, just getting bucked slightly on that final oh, jump there. First, first for Greg Minar. Takes to the hot seat by a ten for the second then. Minar not protected for this race, so that looks like it might be enough to get him into the final, but Charlie Hatton from the UK is on track now. It's unbelievable. Every time he's in danger, the goat is shining. It's unbelievable. Yeah, disappointing first round with not one but two punctures in the semi-final and the finals for Menard. So looking for points to put himself back in that protected category. Take the pressure off a bit. One second off on split four. Hatton's a second back. 55 kilometers an hour for Hatton. That was a good. Definitely a good run. Big smiles from Greg Minard yeah. at the bottom. I think he enjoyed that one. Yeah, especially when you're pr not protected, you know? Yeah, well, if there's anybody who can handle pressure, it's that man. Charlie Hatton down the line, also not protected. What can he do? Three tenths back for Hatton, so a good run from him into fourth on the Afferton machine. Great team, great bikes. Yeah, Rachel's really brought some yeah. energy back, hasn't definitely, she, in there? Yeah. Dakota Norton. We'll say Andreas Kolb, their teammate, coming up later on as well. But this man's teammate, Aaron Gwynn, missing in action. The national champ of the United States of America, Dakota Norton, four intense factory racing on track now. And we know he's dangerous. We all know that. And he showed it many times. He probably, as well, gave uh, so much pressure to Aaron Green to exit at the end of the season and yeah. give his best, too. He's got one of the best heads of hair in Downhill yeah. as well. <laughs> it should be sponsored by Shampoo. Superb mane on the man, but oh! oh ho, ho. And you can see just slid there and it looked yes. like he lost time. Yeah, a little bit, and he, he was pretty much in contact. Did really great bottom part of the wood section. Edging towards the 57 kilometer an hour mark now. Dakota Norton comes down the line. Yeah, it's four. Oh, two tens back. So tight. It's only good enough for four. <laughs> oh, yes. Two tens back, and it's, it's only good enough for four. Then 
It's a big fight to enter to the final, and that's how it's supposed to be. And they're coming thick and fast, the big names now. We're in a pocket off them. Laurie Greenland for the Santa Cruz Syndicate teammates on Menar. On that new look, Santa Cruz V10, one of the most successful race packages in the history of the sport. The Santa Cruz Syndicate, one of the most successful teams in the history of the sport. Oh, that and was good there. Greenland is right in touch, but Ronan Dunn hangs on. Yes, but that, it, it did a really interesting time there. Like the line, sorry. We'll see if it's... I lost a little bit of time. He was looking good on those two corners we saw. Really aggressive, not breaking too much. Laurie no. Greenland, the 25-year-old from Bristol in the UK, heads down the line now. Greenland is the protected rider, so let's see what he stops the clock at. He's faster. Yeah, fast. Greenland. Greenland. Yeah, he did the amazing into the wood section there. The Syndicate go 1-2 in the semi-finals. I have to say, Greenland find a team for himself. Like, he's, he's made a home there. Yeah. This man, though, Benny the Jet, Benoit Coulange. Ah, oh, one of the... Talented French guy. One of the most talented French guys, and that is a big, big statement. Former French national champion on the motorway section, and to me, this is looking fast. And I love the way he's, he's using his upper body, his legs, his arms, everything, and he's fast. He's a protected rider, and he's nine tenths of a second to the good Coulange. Nice and tidy through there. Just this tricky left-hander, then the right-hander, oh. and it's you out on the start-finish strip. That was perfectly done from Coulange. Over the big finish line, jump in, Coulange down to the line. What is he going to stop the clock at? Benoit wow. Coulange goes fastest <laughs> in the semi-final in Lea Gang. 1.1 seconds. Rick, like you said so, in that corner, he made it so good. In one corner, or maybe two, he made up some big time. How difficult is it to back that off, though, and just, uh, just cruise through it? But here is Jordan Williams, then. Hold on to your hats, it's time for Air Jordan. <laughs> Yes. Can you repeat? He want to have fun, and he's having fun. We'll see if today he's had a whole week to process that debut elite win. The young man from the southwest of England is moving away from him now, two seconds back, but he is protected. He is. He is. So we will see Williams in the final. So a sighting run here from Jordan Williams, trying to work out what the conditions are doing. It's a special oh, idea. No. Oh, comes up and jumps oh. out of there. First, we've seen it. What does it equal at the line? Is it going to make any indent into that two-second gap that he is currently back? Jordan Williams down the line. 2.7 oh. seconds. OK. Yeah. 11. So, work to be done, but maybe a clever run, Cedric. Didn't need to throw it all at the wall. He's protected. Yeah, true. But, I mean, if you're thinking overall, yeah. losing some, some points there. There were points on the table available there. Loris Vergier then. What could have been in Lenzerheide the last time? He just landed one of the road gaps slightly wide and it cost him the win right off the edge of that ramp. I always say if Vergier can have everything together from in his head and into his run, he's a dangerous man in the hill. Vergier. And look. Really, a really mixed set of results here, but he's 1.32 back as he comes into these last couple of awkward turns. I don't know if you see that, but he's pushing with his feet like they're doing in skiing, really like pushing. And this is working. Yeah, Vergier. Protected as well after that second place last time out. Comes down the line. Oh, second hey, place second. here. Just unbelievable. France 1 2 currently in the Elite Men's semi final. So much skills from Vergier. But. The world champion on track. The world champion. The champion du Montnoy Bruni for specialized gravity takes to the motorway section in Lea Gang. Oh, he's, he's fast. He needs... That looks fast to oh, me. Oh, looks fast. When Bruni looked fast like this, he's so dangerous. He's not cruising down. I look at the times then, 0.979. The splits don't lie. Bruni, I just think Cedric, he'll want to make a point oh, here. Yeah, All yes. Williams got all the headlines last week. I think Bruni would like to re-establish himself as exactly. the man everyone's talking about. <laughs> He's a, he wanted to say today, I am the number one in my team. I am the boss. The world champion then heads down the line in the elite men's semi-final. What is he going to stop the clock with? He's a second quicker than Coulange. 
Has anybody got an answer for Loic Bruni here in Leah Gang? Looks oh. down the back of the bike. It's cha- oh, the chain, the chain. Look, the, the chain, chain looks like it's yeah, dropped uh, tension uh, somehow. Yeah. yeah. Look like uh, maybe the cassette. Um, the yeah. free hub. Yeah. Are we saying the free hub? Maybe he broke the, um, the, the hub. Maybe. I don't so know. It might be free hub problems, but whatever. He's are a we, second faster. Yeah. Uh, I will go and investigate. <laughs> This man then, we saw him earlier on the broadcast riding our GoPro course preview, Jackson ah, Goldston. For the Imagine Touch and this way he's shining here in the wood section where it's steep and technical. Goldston, the last of this little group of protected riders now. Wow, what a style. Whoa, you see that? Yeah, just, it, just to open that corner. It, whoa. Turn one corner into two corners to spread the break in him. Has it worked for Goldston now? Is he going to go fastest? Golson in the semi-finals, what's it going to be? One, two, three, oh! Crosses the line, Golston then. Second! Second place, so Bruni's time on a bike that looks like it had cried enough. So tight of a Still racing. fastest, okay. No, no, it, a great run for, I mean, Goldstone. Yeah, Lucas Shaw then for the Canyon Collective Factory team as the big names continue to come thick and fast here in the semi-finals. Oh, the line not changing here, it's getting faster and faster. We are attempting to turn a field of 60 of the fastest men in the world into 30 plus whatever protected riders are outside that for the finals. Later on this afternoon, Lucas Shaw very much in touch as well. Yes, he is good, he's shining, he's fine a team for himself too. He's feeling comfortable, he have, he's happy. One of the most relaxed dudes in the yes. best, Lucas Shaw. Always smiling, always happy, chilled out, doesn't come into it. What can he do today? Great talent as well, Luca. Luca Shaw across the line and half a second back on Bruni. That's good from Shaw. Yeah, you know. it's a third so far. Only half a second back. Are we talking about details there? Like minuscule, yeah, minuscule yeah. details. And here is a man with the weight of a team on his shoulders. Common sound muck off by riding addiction. Not having the start to the season they would have hoped. Thibaut de Prella would love to give them a win today. Yeah, to but help. look at that. It's not too bad. Pretty much in touch, and he's able. Oh, lost a little bit more, but he's good. Yeah. Oh. De Prella missing Pierron. They're missing Miriam Nicole in that pit as well. Hugo Marini and Thibaut de Prella flying the flag. Yeah, he needs to get to that rhythm again. Get confident again. 1.3 on split four, he lost some time on the wood section. The 21 year old, one World Cup win to his name, Leger, 2021, after he nearly bit his own tongue off exactly. in a crash. And he was still racing. He was still racing, made of some tough, tough stuff, but 1.3 seconds behind Bruni now. Thibaut de Prella in the Elite Men's semi final. Enough for six so far, 1.3 off. Yeah, not protected, so that's a good marker yes. for him. Yes. BK then, Bernard Kerr leaves the start hot on that prototype pivot bike. Yes, look at the dirt, it's getting really, really tacky now. 55 kilometer, two second, 2.5 on split three, two eight on split two. One of the busiest men in mountain bike and then the wheeler dealer himself, uh, Bernard Kerr. A lot of time. He's lost time, 4.4 seconds back now. Kerr not protected either, so he could no. do with getting the wriggle on here to be tight yeah another guy we have a lot of hats on like team yeah. manager everything that guy can do everything he told us last time out 15 16 people working in that pivot factory racing team at the minute so he said the actual bike racing bits the bit he gets to relax and enjoy himself bernard kerr is going to be enough today 4.6 back for bernard that puts him on the 20th 20th so Bernard Kerr's fate for this final really hanging in what those riders who made their way into the big show yesterday will get. Well, there's a man getting the shot. Look, the slow-mo of Lloyd Bruni. Yeah, we're not going to see anything. Look for the chain. We're not going to see anything from this shot, I don't think. That's quite yeah. far up, but... You can see this, the chain slapping that you see how much. You see, they have rubber on the bottom of the swing arm just yeah. for... The chain to don't slap and make big noise. Look at Bruni. Oh, there. look at the bag wheel. Oh, flexing. Look at the flex and the handlebar. Yeah, looking for the grip. Like Bruni, absolutely just pitch perfect. You imagine the forces traveling through that bike and that upper body just yes. stays planted. The eyes stay focused on the next thing. 
Look at Classic the ice. style from Bruni. Yeah, two or three meters ahead, looking where he's going. Oh, landing on the, uh, on the top of the, the bottom of that stump. Classic Bruni. Finding, Just finds yeah. little details everywhere on track. The, we saw him last time out in Lenzerheide. He landed a triple just slightly late, and he thinks it cost him the yes. win. So he got bucked a little bit and couldn't exit the speed that his corner was not what he wanted. Great. He's happy, and when you see that smile, ooh, oh. it's dangerous. Oh, he's happy, you know. Yeah, a happy Bruni's a dangerous Bruni. Yes, yes, and when you get that confident in. Here we go then. Bruni leads the way from Jackson Goldston, from Lucas Shaw, from Benoit Coulon, from Loris Vergier in this elite men's semi final. It's already so fast. Jordan Williams, 16th. Yes. Bernard Kerr in 20th. Chapelet, Piercy, Breeden, Atwill, Busquets, Zwar, Williamson, and Brayton. All making a claim to get through to the final. Here are the final 10 then. Danny Hart gets us underway with Levesque, Brosnan, Kolb, Isles, Ravelli, Garcon, Guine, Walker, and Palazzari. One of the biggest yes, days coming yes. up for that Italian. So much pressure for sure when you're not used you know, to, to go last. Well, welcome to our coverage of the Elite Men's semi-final here from a sunny league. And some people enjoying a spritz and absolutely why not when you've got the world's best elite men's downhill talents about to drop in at the top. So word from the bottom is Jordan Williams saying it's difficult to gauge just how fast to go. Uh, give you a the light perfect with cloudy conditions. Yes. No dappled light. So Lee Gang, after a disaster on the weather front yesterday, is putting on a show for us today. And this man knows all about putting on a show. Danny Hart, two-time UCI world champion. Look how precise he is with his line. Yeah, on those prototype Schwalbe tyres, the Cube team, excuse me, running this weekend. Danny Hart, 1.6 back though, but we know if anyone can make time in the trees, it is Danny Hart. Look incredible, you know, when you can aim those, you know, those lines and do it, and it look like it's easy almost when you see Danny, Danny yeah. Hart doing it. The red car rocket owns his own bike park. 1.6 on split two, though. In Hamsterley in the UK, 1.6 back. But as soon as we see trees come into the equation, yes. we know that Danny yes. Hart has got time to play with. Yeah. He can open his bag of tricks and get some uh, tenths of a second here or there and quickly be back in contention. Yeah. Not but boosting across to that wall right yet. We haven't seen that today just yet. Look it's at the bike pool. work. Look at the bike work, sideways easy. Oh, that yeah, was perfect. sets himself perfectly over that bridge. That's normally where Danny Art is dangerous. Those wood section. Timing, precision, oh, but he's 2.6 back. That rut really forming yes. hard in that right hander now. By the end of the, you know, this race is, is going to be just a log. It's just a log. Yeah, it's just a log. <laughs> the dirt would be at the bottom. Yeah, this track in Lea Gang running oh, absolutely superbly, but Danny Hart moving backwards yeah, a wee bit. Losing more and more time on 3.4 is not usual for Danny Hart. Hart not protected after a disappointing lens or hide is so. You can see that the marks in the back of his trousers there from where he's been kicked by that back wheel. Oh, like pretty wide here, wide line. Yeah, sprinting. Everything he can, Sprinting. Danny Hart. Down the line now, Danny Hart, what is the clock going to say for the 31-year-old? 4.4 oh, back for Danny. Tight, like top 20. In the 20th position, so again, his fate may yet hang on what the riders further down this order are going to do. Here is Dylan Levesque then. Right, be careful on this guy, Dylan Levesque from France. I'm really liking that new Scott Downhill factory kit. The blue, black, yes, and white. Yeah. Looks good, doesn't Changing it? Changing colors and uh, oh, so strong. And Look at that. Those slight, cranking. Slight tailwind there. Yes. And the wind. Look at the speed he accelerated in that corner with. Yeah. 1.5 back on split two. So the Elite Men's semi final. Plenty of intrigue after weather affected running yesterday. We are looking to turn 60 riders into 30 plus protected. Oh, it, wow. Wow so much speed into this wall ride. 
Oh, bike is moving. Oh, nice one. Elan really far there. So strong on the yes. bike, Levesque, isn't he? Like a bull. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, nice one here. Different line. Yeah, that worked, didn't it? Uh, yes, and it was good. You can see that dappled light there into your favorite corner. Yes. Did good, though. Upper line here, like next to the tree. To open up that next corner. Then Levesque for France, then. It was 1.2, it's two now on split four. Really hard to control the bike here. It's steep. 26 it's years of age. Best result last season was a top 10 in Mont saint -Dan. If you get a top 10 in Mont saint -Dan, oh, you pretty much get it's, it's, yeah, it's a podium <laughs> anywhere else in the world, isn't it? So Levesque heading down into these last awkward corners now. You know, those kind of track like Mont saint anne or Val d'Isol, Val Nord, you know, if you're good there, you have skills. So Levesque down over the line, 2.3 seconds back off the pace inside yeah. the top 10. Yep. Happy with that? Yeah, no, no, it's good. And he's happy. You can see his head. It's not shaking. And it's a, you know, a good run. I told you this last week. It's all about the white shoes. Yeah, make, yeah, yeah, told me. Make and, white shoes and, great again. And you say white socks too. No, no, no too no. much. Oh, Take too much. it back a notch. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. just the shoes. Sorry. Troy Brosnan then, one of the best to ever do it. One of the most consistent mountain bike racers of all time. One of the most consistent competitive cyclists of all time, actually. Yes. Troy yeah. Brosnan from Australia on track for the Canyon Collective now. And uh, at every track in the world, is in the mix. Yep. Unbelievable. So a protected rider going long there. I just wonder if that wind is picking up that tailwind on the motorway section. Why well, look good to me. Yeah, he's in the green. Last some time on split three, but it's nothing. The 29-year-old, we saw him racing in Juro in Tasmania back at the start of the year, said he loved it and said... Uh, Effortless, effortless when he's riding. Two Junior World Championships to his title, five times an Aussie national champion. More wins at Fred Bowen than you've probably got mugs in your kitchen cupboard. <laughs> Troy Brosnan, he said that he was going to hang around downhill until he had an overall title and an elite world champions title. So he, he sort of laughed and said, you might be seeing a lot more of me. Uh, yes, and we won't. Fast. Oh, nice one. Nice. Oh, way inside, and it's, it's in touch. Yeah. Oh, way inside in that line. Brosnan, always capable of a better race day magic. Oh, unbelievable, e effortless. When we see him riding, everything looks easy. But he still has time for style as well. Yeah, he well. still has time to just slip the back end out now and again. And I think he's born with a style. Yeah, definitely. Troy Brosnan then heads down towards the line. What can he do? 158 beats per minute. That's good to see, 150. It's, wow. yeah. <laughs> Three tenths of a second back. Brosnan into second place behind Bruni. Likes it. He's happy. Likes that one. Here we go then, the European Continental Champion, Andreas Kolb. Andy, as he likes to be known. We chatted to him earlier in the week and he was, he was actually really happy with that display in Lenzerheide last time out. He just, he said it wasn't for that crash in the finals. He knew that the speed was there. Oh, he yeah, knows yeah. the form is there. Yeah. He doesn't have to push things. Yeah, he, you know, he got the benefit out of it. And he knew his speed was there. Of course, it's racing, a part of a crash, a part of the game. But you know he had the speed, and it's good for his head. 26-year-old for Continental, Afferton. Losing we, some time. Right? We interviewed him in the, the spa in the hotel, actually, and all the staff had to come out to get their photo with him because he's such a big deal here in Austria. Yes, of course he is. From Schladming, originally a very different bag of chips in Schladming compared to this place, but... Sending it into the woods. Still cold, cracks on. 1.2 back. He is protected. Strong man, too, you can see. It. You oh, know, he's, huge, like, he's, yeah. he's, he's a big man. He's a big old unit. Yes. Much like ourselves, Cedric. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Fine physical ship. Oh, good line here on the outside. Kolb can just carry speed. Yeah, he can't carry he? a lot of speed yeah. there, but he's 1.7 back. He's a lot more round too into the corners compared to Brosman. Brosnan was, was way in. Way Brosnan in. was inch perfect yes. through that wood section, wasn't he? So maybe there is time up there. A little bit like Loic as well. They find some lines, yeah. you know. Sometimes. And you know what? Both Troy and Loic. They are such thinkers as well. They yes. will be studying what other people have done. They will have people watching this, letting yeah. them know there might yeah. be time here, there might be time there, but... Teamwork, teamwork from the team. 
Here we go, Kolb down over the line in 1.6 back on Lloyd Bruni. Kolb, eighth place, absolutely nothing in it at the front of this race. And it is about to get interesting because Finn Isles is on track for specialised gravity. The last of the three specialised gravity riders who took three spots on that top five last time out in Switzerland. He's dangerous, he and when he dangerous. gets confident, even more. You get the feeling as well that Finn would like to fire back after that win from Jordan, wouldn't he? Yeah, true, true. But it's it's good for Finn. He's doing his homework. He's doing with Kevin his mechanic. What you know that they don't try to look what other people are doing. They have their own game. On that prototype specialized machine with the 3D printed lugs that allow him to just play with the geometry on it a bit it, easier. It's bang off! Yeah, Isles is on one here. Oh, look at Smoose is that! 55 kilometers an hour. Everything is happening under his feet. Look, the bike working. Pushing the bike into the ground, yes. generating speed. Really low in the front, you see? Zender bar really low. That's the way he likes it. Such a strong rider, Isles can hold himself up with that low bar setup. Whoa, oh, finding a big hole it, there. Yes. Didn't seem to slow him down too much though. One second One now second. to the good. Yeah, it's shaking, but it's because he's going fast. Isles is protected. The best in the world here. They're wow. right, the cream's rising to the top. Oh, looking in good in that corner. Wow. One World Cup win to his name at his home. Round in Mont Saint Anne last time out. He'd, like to, he'd uh, like to add to that as he comes down the line. Is Finn Isles going to go fastest in the semi final here? Beautiful whip over the line, brings it back in, crosses oh, the line. First. Finn Isles now goes fastest in the semi final. Almost a second Almost on Loic Bruni. Almost a second on Loic Bruni. Wow. Oh, yeah. You see, early in the cranks, like after the corner around that tree, he was on the crank so early. I think we should just dedicate a live camera to Lloyd Bruni's facial expressions because I'd love to see his face <laughs> after that one. Oh, but in the future, we'd probably be able to. Loris Ravelli then for Italy for the Canyon Collective Pirelli team. One of those riders who got that magic window in amongst the monsoons of yesterday's qualifying session. We've seen him race just about every model of bike Canyon make. He's done some good work on the e-bike for the e-enduro races. And knows an all-around great rider. Yeah, just a complete package, Ravelli. It'll yes. be interesting to see what he can do today. 2.3 seconds back at the second split then, so 55.6 kilometers an hour through the speed trap. Look how much speed they're entering into that long right corner. So if you are joining us now towards the sharp end of this one, we did have a load of rain yesterday that meant that the last four or five riders, with maybe the exception of Matt Walker, were really, they got the best of the track conditions and it's all to play for as Ravelli jumps to the right-hand side of the track. They've, they're on the big stage. Why not? Why not have a crack and see if you can mix up with the world's best in the elite men's finals? Heading your way just later on this afternoon. 4.5 on split four. It's hard. It's tough, tough it, work up there in Leogang today, but Ravelli riding superbly, you'd have to say. Barely a foot wrong so far. The front end, Lac Canyon, just sliding wide there in the rut. You know, he's trying, it's trying hard, and that's what you have to do today. Keep everything you have. Ravelli then for Italy down the line. Where is he going to stack up? Five seconds back into 23rd. So, so might yeah. work. Yeah, might work. Oh. Johan Garcin from France. Scott Daniel factory team. Terrific mustache on him in that uh, <laughs> little graphic as well. Yes. Garcin, what can he do today? Another rider got the best of the conditions yesterday. It has just got a good bit brighter here at the finish area, so I wonder if the dappled light in those lower woods will return, something that a lot of the racers talking about struggling with. Just hard to spot your lines whenever there's shafts of bright light coming into the otherwise dark woods. Then far here, 
you know, so much pressure from you know those guys starting back. You know, like the last, you know, the last, uh, the last riders. You can just yeah. see there's a triple on that yeah. set of triple wood. Yeah, triple or quadruple. I think it's double double. I think you can make the whole thing. Garcon just getting it nicely, but he's five nine seconds back. Yes, five seconds back for Garcon. Heading down into this wood section, roared on by the crowd. They know this is a big day for him as well. Attacking, tried to dial up. I think you've up. got a setup so wide for that yeah. right hander now. He didn't go too high here, didn't open the line because he took another line here. Whoa! Whoa. That's a tree just behind that other three. Kept the feet on the pedals though, kept it moving, but that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, just as I say that. Yeah. You know, it's it's hard as well. When you make a mistake like this, it's so hard to come back into your A game and you start to make more mistakes and really And that's where difficult. we see that the supercomputers of the Brunies and the Brosnans can just process all that information yes. so quickly and come up with answers. And, uh, 10 seconds yeah. now back. Expensive billing, 10 seconds. Yeah. As he comes down to the finish line, jump now. It wasn't going his way, but those woods finished it off. What Lovely whip, big whip bro. over what the line. A whip. And sure, look, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. 57, 14, 14 seconds, seconds back. Shakes the head. Not happy. Another French guy, Jan Gianni. Jan Gianni then leaves the star hut. A lot of friends, guys. This motorway, you think you try to recover, but you have to be so good in timing. Then it's a lot of pressure as well. You know, you want to aim the perfect landing, and yeah. you know, you want to breathe, you want to save energy, but it's so hard. 2.2 seconds back. Oh, so much so speed. fast, isn't it? So much speed. I think uh, for the man, it's safe to say, currently the fastest in in downhill mountain biking. I mean, some fast ones over the years. 3.8 on split three, 52k an hour. So he's not completely out of touch here. No. Going eight. Oh, oh yeah, there's just, <coughs> you can actually see on camera how hard it is to judge the turning point yes, there. Yes, they like big braking bumps. Oh, he's. Definitely trying. He's a 2022. Uh, like five now. The 2022 elite French overall title holder won the junior overall in 2019. So he does have some pedigree here, Guinet. Yes. 5.5 on split four. And this tricky little rut. Yeah. Really off the back of the bike as well, over yes. the back axle. Yeah. Different style. Reminiscent of Brendan Fairclough. Yeah. Heads down to the line then. A tidy run from Guayane. Is it going to be enough? 32. Oh, just outside yeah. for Guayane. Yeah, just. But you know what? Nothing to be ashamed of there. No. A great run. He, he, he gave it all. And that's what matters today. So this is the 2020 overall title winner, Matt Walker, Madison Saracen factory team. One of the best of the current crop of UK riders at the minute, Walker. Likes going fast in just about any vehicle possible. Yeah, looking good at a top apart, but... We'll see what the splits yeah. say. He'll be up in amongst it. I am sure Walker as the drone just battles to keep up with him. We rejoin him further down through one of these many tunnels in Leogang. 1.5 a speed, hey. He's 1.5, he's yes, in touch. He's in touch. On that prototype Saracen, it's actually custom made to be able to get uh, telemetry plumbed into it. There's little lugs everywhere all over it. Again, great to see downhill racing at the sharp end, being used to define the bikes that you and I will all be out riding at the weekend loop. Perhaps not as fast as this as Walker. And does. it's on only one line there, only yeah. one line. You have to go through that big braking bump. Do you know what though? I think Brosnan was Brosnan and Isles were the best we yeah. saw through this wood section, really. Yeah, Loic as well. It was, it was good. It was good. Losing a little bit more time here. Oh! oh. He's, uh, oh he's using uh, what is left uh, of knobs on the tyre. Yep, doesn't pay for his tyres, Matt yeah. Walker. <laughs> as he heads down now, out of the wood section and the least tricky combination of turns. 
That will bring him on to the finish straight then. Back on the pedals. Yeah, cracking hard. Like. As many watts as anyone. Matt Walker over the big finish line jump. Just getting blown slightly there. Crosses the line right. 2.7 seconds back in the temp. Safely yes. does it for Matt Walker in the big show. Yes. Important to make it to the final today. Oh, it's going to be so quick. That was good from Walker, actually. That's exactly yes. what he needed to do. And here we are then, the fastest qualifier from yesterday, Davide Palazzari from Rogue Racing after Skull oh! Team. Oh! Oh, lost the visor. Oh, that's, I was telling oh, you. Oh, that, that, is, that is in one demonstration how heartbreaking this sport can be. So quick. Just look, watch, look. Oh, he landed a little bit. Oh, too hot into that right corner. Yeah, and, and it, just you know, gets spun around. It's just a little path too. It's not. It's not wide there. It's just enough for the tire and a little bit more. But well, proof that you have to be careful on that bit. Yeah, it's so sad because he, you know he attacked the track like you know. He attacked, and he attacked just that little bit hard and a little bit too early. Davide Palazzari. Oh, this is one he's going to wake up and rue for a long time. The comes 27-year-old, the 2020 Italian national champ. Throws a foot off, why not? The peak of the helmet just hanging on the side. A lot of them now uh, made with a uh, magnet fastener so they can come away quickly so it doesn't spin the rider's neck around in the event of a crash like that. Jumps onto the wall. Oh, does his best to absolutely disintegrate himself on that joint on that wall ride, but gets away with it. May as well have fun now, Palazzari. The fastest qualifier at a UCI World Cup. He gets to go to the bar and say that every Saturday night from here on out. Here are the results saying off the elite men's semi-final. Finn Isles takes it by nearly a second from Loic Bruni. Troy Brosnan just behind him. Levesque done, 14th at the end of the day for Ronan Dunn, Dakota Norton, Charlie Hatton, Tehutu Ariki Penny, Toby Meek 22nd, Oshino Callahan, Laura Chavelli, Dante Silva, Danny Hart, Bernard Curran 27th makes it through, Joe Breed in the last of the top 30, Jack Piercy just ahead of him, Greg Williamson 35th. All action in the semi-finals here today. Plenty of elite level finals racing coming up next though. Here from Leah Gang, Salzburger Land, Epic Bike Park. To look out the commentary booth window, Palazzari crosses the line. Well, he gave it everything. And everything was just a little too much. Let's see some of the shots from this one then. What has this man got in his pocket? Finn Isles. Through that stump section where all the winners of Leah Gang have their names immortalized. He would fancy having his up there as well. You see again, plenty of chain slap on this completely prototype specialized racing machine. Lloyd Bruni crossed the line saying that he couldn't pedal anymore, so. Maybe more in the bag for Bruni, but Finn Isles squashing that jump with more style than just about anyone else could muster. So coming up next, one o'clock then, the women's elite final. Well, Leah Gang running faster than it was yesterday. And if this dry weather keeps up, we may well see it at its best. Come elite racing. And that is what it is all about here at the second round of the UCI Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup from Leo Gang Salzburger Land. Don't miss a second. This one promises to be an absolute belter of a race. 
semi-finals were good. You wait for the finals. He's specialized demo. He's fast. <laughs> He's carrying a lot of speed. Just a couple of turns to go. Jordan Williams, 18 years old. Oh, he's looking. Oh, oh. that was fast. Here we go, Rachel Afferton. It's Super nice. Bruni! What is the second split going to say? Now she's going to have to hit the gas. The fastest bump in the world on track! Wow! And she Jordan Williams crosses the line! Whoa. Jordan Williams goes into the hot seat! Troy Brosnan claps! Dakota Norton cannot believe it! Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Leo Gang Salzburger Land. We're here for the big one, the second round of the UCI Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup of 2023 from a venue that has provided nothing but classics over the years. One of the various, one of the very best places to go bike racing. Here it is then. What a stunning, stunning part of Austria this place is. Here is how the day looks then. We're about to go racing with the downhill final for the elite women. After that, it's the elite men after an intriguing semi-final from them. Tomorrow, all about cross-country Olympic. Women under 23 get us off early doors. Then it's the men's and it's the elite women. And then at half three, the elite men's cross-country Olympic World Cup. Well, it is filling up nicely down there in the finish arena. Just underneath our commentary booth. And all eyes are on this one then. Valentina Hull, the Austrian, chasing a win here in Austria at her home round. For the Rock Shocks track race team. She won qualifying. She went fastest in the semi final. Walking Valley Hole conjure up for us today. Just look at this shot. We set it on air, but if that doesn't make you want to go and ride a push bike, then I don't know what will. 
So here are the results of that semi-final then. Pole from Nina Hoffman, who was ultra, ultra fast. Camille Ballon, Trasnik, Rachel Afford and the star of last time out in Lenzerheide in fifth. Louise Anna Ferguson in 15th. We had an absolutely biblical deluge, two of them actually yesterday here in Leo Gang, but the sun has baked this track dry and it is almost back to its best. It's actually many of the riders in the semi-finals saying it's better for that moisture and this morning's dry conditions. But here we have it then, this is how it looks. That rough choppy off camber section, vital if you want to string a good run together here. In for that root section, two of them actually, and then onto the motorway where every single kilometer an hour counts for your entry into this really, really technical wood section. Before you re-emerge, a couple of tricky turns before down to the finish, the famous finish arena, excuse me. 2.1 kilometers. Okay guys, Liu Gang 2023, let's go. Dropping off the gate here, we got a hip into a corner, same as last year. And this off camber is super blown out already. Um, wah, gap over the road, everything's the same so far to last year, except for this. We go straight and we got some grass off camber now. That's uh, pretty loose, but now we're back onto the old track. A few little doubles, it's quite windy up here, so you gotta watch out for that. And this stuff's dusty, but pretty much the same as last year. A little bit of a different tape job here. They took out the rollers that Laurie looped out on last year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we go low, do a little gap, yo. Know, Slightly different tape job, but still pretty much the same route through the tunnel. Over here, this is another big change. You do it like this little checkup, and then you go off down here into this stump section. A lot of people are looking at this, checking out lines and stuff. Got through that pretty good, actually. Woo. Oh no, missed the eye line. And we're onto the motorway. Woo! Love these jumps. Oh, got a full speed tuck for this next bit. A lot of time can be made or lost here over these jumps. But it's running fast this year, we're flying. Ooh. Oh, I love this bit, it's so fun. Feels like on a roller coaster. Wow. Triple. Wah. See if I can do the gap of the wall ride. Wah. That was sketchy. Okay, we're back into the trees now. But it is running so fast compared to last year. Not even comparable. Another little new section here. Just kind of straightened it up a bit compared to last year. Help carry speed here as well. Straighten it up. Over the gap. Nice little scrub roller here. And we're close. Not there yet though. Gotta make it through this last section first. That rut's hard, but I got it good. And we sprint and tuck to the finish. Phew. There it is. Well, Jackson Goldstone on the GoPro course preview makes it look easy, but rest assured, a fast race run here in Austria, one of the most elusive things in the sport of downhill racing. Here are the elite women then that we will be talking about in contention for the race today. Camille Balanche, the overall title holder. Disappointed last time out at home, she'll be out for blood today. But she's gonna have to come up for an answer, come up with an answer for this woman, Valentina Hull, the local, has won quality, has won the semis. Valentina Hull looking ominously fast here in Austria. 
Rachel Afferton. What's she got in her locker today? The winner last time out. Redefining what many people think possible in the sport of downhill. Every time she gets on a bike. Nina Hoffman. Really electrified the splits throughout that semi-final, but did take a little topple over and was left holding that bad knee of hers. So 